this is where MAGA comes to talk. We've got a lot to cover today. Um, Trump is all over the news, so we're going to cover that. And, of course, uh, well, it's showtime, so you'll just have to listen. All right. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig. You're listening to Florida's longest-running radio show. That's right, the Steve Kane Show on the radio since 1977, celebrating 47 years on the radio. We've got a lot to cover on the program this morning. President Trump doing a lot of media, which we're going to talk about. But at first, you know, I want to mention the passing of Toby Keith. Toby Keith, you know, uh, 62 years old, passed away from stomach cancer. And I'm not, a, I'm not a country music guy. If I hear a country music song and it sounds good, I'll listen to it. But I, I don't go out of my way to listen to country music very often. Although everyone's going to pretend to be the biggest country music fan and everything else. But I will tell you this about the great Toby Keith, okay? And this is so true about the great Toby Keith. You know, um, after 9-11... When he came out with his song, The Angry American, which is an official title, Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue, Toby Keith's Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue, The Angry American, was such a, a, a uniting song for this great country of ours after September 11th. And it was, uh, it was a beautiful song. I know I, I've heard the story already several times since he passed, that he wrote it in 20 minutes. I, I had no idea about that. That song was so perfect. And through, and I, I love music. I, I listen to music a lot, guys. I really do, more than you probably realize. But, or I don't know if you'd realize who's ever thought about if I listen to music or not, but I listen to music more than you would guess. I should put it that way. But... Out of all the songs that I can think of in my time, and again, obviously it depends on what, how old you are and what times you live through, but during my adult life and teenage years and all that time, the time that I've been on this earth following music, Toby Keith's Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue, the Angry American is what I think it's most commonly known by, was the most unifying song ever uh, in my lifetime. After 9-11, you know, when 9-11 when happened, it was, we were numb. And I remember when, uh, I had never heard of Toby Keith before that. I know he'd been on the music scene for a while, and I, I never heard of him until that song. And, what we, you know, we, we, we talk about how sick and twisted these Trump derangement sufferers are today. Liberals, Democrats, have always been sick and twisted. And I remember... ABC hosted a concert for America after 9-11. It's going to be on ABC. It was on ABC. And Peter Jennings was in charge of it. And Peter Jennings, remember he was the anchor for many years of ABC News. And uh, he had a distinction. Peter Jennings was the evening anchor for ABC News, and he never went to college. And he used to always make a big deal about that, which is, you know, shows you what a college degree is worth, right? Peter Jennings didn't need one. But Peter Jennings would not allow Toby Keith to uh, perform at ABC's Concert for America after September 11th because Peter Jennings thought that Toby Keith was too divisive. And it was actually just the opposite. And, you know, after 9-11, 9-11, so much is on our mind because the firefighter that was with George Bush on, on top of Ground Zero with the bullhorn passed away this week. So and now we've lost Toby Keith. So, you know, 9-11's out there, you know, in our minds. And, and uh, you know, everyone's got a 9-11 story, you know, you know. But there were, I, I think, after 9-11, there were two things that, that kept the country together. One was... Future war criminal George Bush with his bullhorn with the firefighter on top of the rubble, right? That you're seeing all over the news because the firefighter passed away. And Toby Keith's song. And, and I remember that song was playing 
everywhere. It was playing in people. If you drove up next to someone's car, they had that song on. We used to play it uh, on the show. We used to end the show with it every day for months. The uh, Angry Man. I know he's got a lot of other songs, but I'm not a country music guy. So I, I really, I, I've heard a couple other songs from Toby Keith, and I'm sure they're fine, but I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be all down with the country music honky-tonk like uh, everybody else is going to be today. I just know Toby Keith was great. He was very important, and he brought the country together. Um, unlike this crap they pulled at the Grammys the other night. You know, this, this thing they did at the Grammys with Tr Tracy Chapman, apparently this country singer, who I've never heard of before, I forgot his name, it's not important, but he's a white guy, not Darius Rucker. This guy's a white guy. And he did a cover version of Tracy Chapman's Fast Car, and they were calling him racist. Because why? Because of black? Is, is Tracy Chapman gay, by the way? I don't know. But because Tracy Chapman's black and she, that's her song originally, and this guy did a cover and it's racist. So then Tracy Chapman goes on stage at the Grammys with this white guy and blesses him that he's not racist, I am here. Do you know how much money Tracy Chapman made off this guy doing a cover of her song? I, I haven't heard of Tracy Chapman in, I don't, dec it seems like 20 years Fast Car, was was that in the late 80s or 90? Was that 1990 or like 89? She had, a, it, and my, she wrote that song. So she's made boatloads of, they're calling this guy a racist for giving Tracy Chapman her biggest payday in like 35 years. And, and then, of course, you've got to ask the question, was it, was it racist? When Whitney Houston did a cover song of Dolly Parton's hit, I Will Always Love You, when she was in The Bodyguard, that was a song written and performed and was a hit by Dolly Parton. And Whitney Houston made it a hit again, a bigger hit than with Dolly Parton. Did anybody, was it, was it, was it cultural appropriation? Yeah, I remember I saw an interview once with Dolly Parton and she said, I made more money off that song with Whitney than I did when I released it. So... You know, this nonsense that um, it's racist for a white guy to do a How many people? I love cover bands. Are you kidding me? So anyway, back to Toby Keith. So we lost Toby Keith and uh, stomach cancer, which is a god-awful way to go. Uh, anyone uh, who's had someone close to them who's passed of cancer, it sucks. Uh, there's no getting around it. But, you know, you look at Toby Keith... The late, great Toby Keith, who was such a unifier with his music. And then, I didn't even know the Grammys were on. I, you know. And then what happens in the Grammys? You get a billionaire up there complaining that he and his wife are victims because she hasn't got an album of the year. Well, they're billionaires. Go home and count your money, all right? You know, and, or, 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 or a white guy's a racist because he does a cover song. Some of the some there's been big hits by bands over the years, massive hits with uh, cover songs. Cover songs pretty good sometimes. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they are. But it's so rare when you have music. And and when and when Toby Keith's The Angry American came out, other than this jerk Peter Jennings who thought it was too divisive. You know, Peter Jennings was a Canadian. So what do you what, you know? What do you expect? But. When, I want you guys to think, and, and we'll, we'll, I mean, when, when was the last, how many songs can you name, like Toby Keith's Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue, The Angry American, that have unified the country? Because I remember when that song was out, people were blown away by it. And people were listening to country music who haven't listened to a country song before or since that song, like me, you know. There, there's not many songs out there or performers that uh, are, are unifiers like, like Toby Keith. So Toby Keith will be lost. He'll be missed. And uh, he was great. So we'll take our first break. Yeah, Lee Greenwood's song's awesome. I mean, I love Lee Greenwood's song too. But that, that song, The Angry American, you know, the, the Angry American, it was just the perfect song at the perfect time that the country needed. 
We'll stick a boot in your blank because that's the American way. I, I, I know the whole song by heart. I'm not going to go. I do because, we, I, we we, like I said, we used to play it on the show. I actually, the only, I bought that on CD. That is the only country album I have ever bought. I bought the whole album. I have never bought a country album or a country song in my life other than that Toby Keith album. You know? And uh, that's, how, that's how great it was. All right. We'll take our first break of the day and uh, I'll get back into the uh, issues. But how many songs can you think of that unified the country like Toby Keith did with that song? It was the song that the country needed at that moment in time because the people were upset, they were grieving, they were pissed, and, and the song addressed everything. And even liberals were proud, although briefly, of the American flag. That's when, you know, when, when Toby Keith's song was out is when everyone was driving around with American flags on that little thing in the, you know, connected to, you wrote, you, remember you'd put that plastic thing with the American flag on the window of your car, you'd roll up the window and people were driving around with American flags, you know, yeah, and listening to Toby Keith. All right, we'll take our break and be right back. Yeah, what songs have been unifying as that? Not many. Not many. I don't mean great songs. I mean that unified the country through through a difficult time. No, We Are the World doesn't... Um, no, Richmond, Richmond, North of Richmond, that was uh, very brief. No. No, Curtis the Bird, White, and Blue was, like, around for a long time. Now, this is, like, uh, the best. I have a whole set of these, different colors. I got these for when I'm on my uh, MAGA scooter. I can fill this up with anything and put it under the seat. Like, like watch. Yeah, I, I get nervous when I do this, but this has hot coffee in it. Look, it doesn't spill. Completely upside down. It's at, isn't that amazing? I have a whole set of these. They're amazing. Although I did spill coffee when I was putting in the cup this morning. So I got, you know, got to wash my Trump sweater. No, it's not a Stanley cup, although I do have a Stanley. But no, I don't know what the make of this is. P-R-I-M-U-L-A. P-R-I-M-U-L-A. I don't know, but it, it works very well. The Taliban song was nothing like the Angry American. <clears throat> I'm not talking about great songs. There's a lot of great songs. I'm talking about a song that unites the country. Yeah, I've got the song in my head right now. I don't want to sing because I can't sing. My singing is so bad. Maybe I should because my singing is so bad, my video here might go viral if I sing. You know, and the, and the thing with, with uh, courtesy of the red, white, and blue, it um, crossed genres. Everyone was listening to that song except Peter Jennings. Made in China? Probably. Everything's made in China, isn't it? Thank the Democrats for that. And Nixon for opening China up. Nine FM and anywhere in the world at True Oldies FLA. 
All right, welcome back. 19 minutes after the hour, if you're on hold, stand by. Now, this thing with the Toby Keith, you're, you're welcome to call in on Toby Keith. I don't want people calling in listing songs that they like, okay? There's a lot of songs that I like, you know. I listen to a lot of 80s and 90s music. I was listening to, uh, the, I was listening to uh, the Bangles over the weekend. They got some great songs, you know. The best song of the 80s is Take On Me by AHA. I'm not talking about great songs that you like. Can you think of a song when there was a crisis going on, like the attacks on America of September 11th, where uh, an artist like Toby Keith came along with a song that united the country at that time? I, I can't think of another one. Um, we got a lot we're going to cover today. President Trump is really, he's just amazing. We're going to talk about the greatest president ever and much more as we go on. But I'll take a call or two before we move on. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Brian from Alabama. Hey, Brian from Alabama. Yes, sir. I called in uh, Friday, and my first name is David, and I, I have a disability called cerebral palsy. Okay. And uh, what is it? Cerebral palsy. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I agree with your with what you're saying. I love your show. I agree with everything. Well, okay. Now let me now let me tell you. Okay, so you you're a, okay. You called in on Friday. I remember the call, and you you, you were not as uh, you were not as articulate then as you are today. I did make a re I did make a reference that you sounded intoxicated. Um, and, and, and you're taking offense to that because you have cerebral palsy. No, I'm not taking offense. Well, I don't know. You've been leaving me messages on YouTube for like two or three days. I've seen your comments on, on YouTube. I, 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 you know, I could, uh, but, but, I, but, uh, but let me, a couple things about it. Okay. I want you to just bear with me. First off, how the hell am I supposed to know over the phone that you have cerebral palsy? When someone calls me early in the morning and they're slurring their words, am I supposed to think that they're drunk or have cerebral palsy? Which would which which would be the first that would come to someone's mind? So someone that was intoxicated. Exactly. So are you calling to apologize to me for all your comments on YouTube that you've been leaving for me? In part, in part, but. Oh. I, like here, here, here's one of them. Okay, you left this one um, five hours ago. Okay, you said I called the radio show and was accused of being drunk, and I have a disability which did and affects my speech. I was accused of being intoxicated, and it really hurt my feelings. David from Alabama. Now, David, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Okay, yeah. but but how am I supposed to know that you have cerebral palsy and you're not in, drunk? When you and you were really slurring your words on Friday. I understand that, but I, I didn't. When when I call in, I don't. You know, I want to be able to call in. You're welcome to call in. Every you're well. Everyone's welcome to call in, and you're you're a good call. And if I'm if I call in and I'm having a bad day, the words my words are not articulated as well as they are today. We mean when you're more when you're more symptomatic. Okay. Well, I, I don't want to hurt your feelings, and I apologize for hurting your feelings, but I'm certainly not, but, but how, you know, I, let me tell you, we, we used to have a board op, I don't know if I told you about this board op, Mike, we used to have a board op who was blind, and did I ever tell you about this guy? No, and he was really blind, he wasn't legally blind, he was completely blind, and the entire, and, and the entire control room and everything was in Braille, right? Everything was in Braille, he was completely, not legally blind. He saw nothing. I mean, he was completely blind. And, and uh, he was a very good board op, and everything was in Braille. Uh, the whole radio station was in Braille, and, uh, and everything was labeled for us that were sighted as well. But, but everything was, he was completely blind. And he was, a, he was a gossip, this guy. He was the biggest gossip that I've ever worked with at a radio station. And, and that's saying a lot because guys that work at radio stations are like, they have like knitting circles, right? Yeah, yeah, they, it, it, yeah, yeah. And he was, and he was talking about someone at the, uh, at the radio station and I couldn't, um, I couldn't remember who this guy was, 
So I'm talking to this blind guy. He's telling me all this crap about this guy. And I said, you know, I just can't remember who that is. I said, can you tell me what he looks? I said, can you tell me what he looks like? And he, and he said, he said, Brian, he says, no, I can't. And I, and I felt, I was so embarrassed. I put my hand on his shoulder. I said, oh my goodness. I said, I'm so sorry. He said, Brian, that's like a great compliment. That means you don't look at me as a blind person. Amen. So I thought that was a good thing. So, you know. And that's the way I, that's the way I want you to look at me. As a, as a drunk. I know, I know. No, no, I'm kidding. I, I want you to look, I want you to look at me as, you know, someone that agrees with you. But I had one comment about Kirby Keith. I yes. That was, that was the best song he ever wrote. And I, you know. I believe that's what he'll be remembered for. Oh yes. Uh, you know, no matter, no matter what other song, if you, if anyone's a patriot at all, they'll they'll remember him for that song. Oh yeah. He wrote on nine eleven. If anyone is American at all, I mean, no, I mean, like for real, but you know, what I mean, that was a great song. It was and. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not a big country music fan, but I love that song, and I still play it to this day, you know, and it, it I hope and I pray that people, people remember him for that song. Uh, and oh, yeah. Well, you know, and I, you know, I, you know, I wonder, uh, because he had stomach cancer, Toby Keith, he toured with the troops like nonstop for years. I, I, I wonder if he got the cancer from being in all these combat zones. I want, I want, you know, I, because if you think about it, so many firefighters uh, are, you know, has died or, or got some sort of, uh, you know, uh, disease or something from 9-11. And, so it does make you wonder, you know. Yep. I would, I would, I would count him as, in my opinion, and I have no background to prove this, but I would count him as one of the fallen ones that died as part of 9-11. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, listen, David in Louisiana, it's good to hear from you. Sorry I hurt your feelings, but hey, you know, what can I do? All right. The last, you know. All right, all right, we already we already went through it. We don't have to tread on it again. But t take care. We'll talk again. All right, David. Take care. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah. Good morning, Brian. This is Richie. Oh, hey, Richie. I, I I listened to that song, and that was a great song. It was a great unifier. I have one song that outdid it. That I that I even think you'll admit it. It brought the country together prior to our births, and that was World War Two. Kate Smith. God bless America. And it continues today to, to be like the national anthem. Of well, we got to we got to keep I think we got to keep it to to our lifetimes cuz uh, uh God bless America um during the second world. I I don't against Hitler. Okay. I I don't know. When I don't know when I don't know. I mean, I wasn't there then. I mean, I know the song. It's a great song. A lot of people want it to be our anthem. But uh, I don't I, I don't know if it was see the thing about I think the country was united after 9/11 it was crazy because you know when Pearl Harbor was attacked, most people didn't even know where what Pearl Harbor was and it, it, Hawaii wasn't even a state then. Uh, it was a military target. 9/11 hit in a place that I mean I, I, you know I, I've been in the World Trade Center. I didn't go up to the top. Because it took hours to get to get up there when I was there, but you know that hit that hit was a civilian target. It was in a place that so many Americans not only are familiar with but had been to. It was a different thing, and it was and and we didn't have a a, a country to focus our anger towards. And I I just think the song was. Uh, just so perfect at that time. Um, it was just amazing. I, I, I cannot imagine that Kate Smith with America u unified because you know to see that see that. Song. Yeah, maybe. Your song. Let, let me just say this real quick because I know it's your break time. Oh yes, I'm late. Let, 
Yeah, not for nothing. Look what's happened to the United States with the Muslim world. Now, today, look at how our colleges look at everything since 9-11. What the heck happened to our... Obama. Obama, that's what happened. That's right. It's true. We'll be right back. Make it morning radio great again. Yeah, everything they had... Uh, when they had everything at the radio station in Braille, how they did it, they had a, um, a machine. It was kind of like a label maker. And, but it printed everything in Braille. And it was like clear tape, but it had like the Braille dots on it that you could, you could feel. And everything on the controls and everything all around we all had the, the Braille tape from the Braille label maker. Freedom Soup, are you watching Sarasota Tim on YouTube? Freedom Soup. Because that sounds like something Sarasota. Does anyone know who that is? <laughs> hey now. I yeah, know Toby Keith was great. I, you know, that interview I, that's uh, been all over uh, YouTube of him the last few weeks. When you see him without the cancer, I, I didn't have the heart to watch it. I mean, over there, yeah, World War One. Well, I think over there, that's a great song, by the way, but um, over there is, was more about trying to get people interested in going to war in Europe, I think, wasn't it? That was like a, probably, I could be wrong, but I thought, I think Toby Keith's song was, was a healing thing. That thing about taking Social Security at 62, you know, I don't know. I don't have an, I don't have an opinion on that, but I have talked to people who um, say it's like great to do that for them. It's been good for them. But then I, I, um, I know a guy who, who all he did was regret that he did take it early because that couple hundred less he was getting a month was like a big deal to him. And he had to get a job. So. But every day could be our last, unfortunately. Yep. You took yours at 62, Kim? I, I mean, my, I, I, I do not give advice like that, but my, my guess would be if you can wait, wait. I mean, every, every month you wait, you get more money from your Social Security. So some, some people need it at 62. Depends on your financial situation. Some people really need it at 62. I'll talk about that later when I talk about Joe Thomas, this conversation. You gonna work till your seventies? Well, yeah, you know, I've got a cool career, so I can't imagine retiring. I can't imagine 
working less but not fully retiring. Full retirement for most people seems to be a death sentence. I mean, I, I, I know people they, they, that have money. They retire and do nothing and they, they rot away. All right, welcome back, everyone. 34 minutes after the hour. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. So, oh, hold on. Hit the wrong button there. So, President Trump went on uh, Bongino's show yesterday and challenged Biden to a debate. Let me play the exchange. Because he can't talk. He can't do anything. He's ruining our country. And I don't think he's going to run. And I don't know if, if it's donors or otherwise. It might be his family. It might be something. I don't think he's yeah. going to run. But I'd like to yeah. go for immediately debates. I'd like to debate him now because we should debate. We should debate for the good of the country. So I will officially on your show call. I will oh, wow. Also, Look at that. Said, We're breaking I'm news, Mr. President. Donald J. Trump Donald calls for debates against uh, Joe Biden. I mean, that's great. So we, we can break his news here. Problems, Dan, and get I him love to, it. Change his ways, but I am officially doing that. I also put out, you probably <laughs> noticed, that I'll take his spot at the Super Bowl if they want. We'll get three. Yes! I uh, really love it. Mr. President, I gotta go. Okay, yeah, okay. I'll talk about Bongino in a moment, okay? But so President Trump was trying to announce uh, his, his debate, uh, that he would like to debate Biden. Now, obviously, that's not gonna happen because Biden can't do it. I mean, he can't. He can't talk to the kid giving him the ice cream cone at the ice cream shop, okay? And uh, his cognitive decline has been just so much he wouldn't be able to handle it. But challenging him to a debate, see, here we are. We're in the, we're, we're in the two-way uh, debate now. And what's going to happen with this is a lot of people are going to say, well, why should Biden debate? This is what the left will try to do. Why should Biden debate Trump after all? Trump didn't debate Nikki Haley and DeSantis and Christie and the others. There's a difference here. You know, you don't, you don't debate your lessers. You debate your equals or those greater than you, okay? And Biden and Trump are not equals. Trump's the, the superior in that dynamic. And I don't mean a superior debater, just in general. Trump has the country behind him. Biden has really very few people behind him. You know, even President Trump in an interview, he's done a few interviews in the last couple of days. I can't remember if this was the uh, Fox Business interview. One of the interviews President Trump did over the weekend, he says there's very few anti-never Trumpers now. There's very few never Trumpers. And that's true. There's a lot fewer never Trumpers, you know, and, you know, I was talking yesterday how, how Donald, Donald Trump is like the Wizard in the Wizard of Oz. You reveal, he revealed the curtain to see what the inner workings of the country were. But I got a call about this time yesterday morning from a new listener in, in uh, the Los Angeles area in California. And he was telling me how so many people he knows in California are going to vote Trump. For the first time, they're going to vote Republican in Los Angeles. There's, there's been a big change in this country in the last three years. You know, President Trump has changed the entire expectation that people have for their, not just their presidents, but their elected officials. You know, I remember when uh, Obama was president, he, he liked to take pictures have pictures taken of him in the Oval Office talking on the phone with his feet up on the desk, which is very disrespectful. But after what Bill Clinton did with that desk with Lewinsky, I mean, you know, that's nothing. But same desk, resolute desk, same desk that uh, President Kennedy had John John under and everything. But one thing people used to point out about Obama's desk in the Oval Office, it was always empty. There, would, there was never a piece of paper on his desk. It was completely empty because he didn't work. He was a spokesperson. Most presidents, pretty much every one of them, other than Trump, they don't do anything. They don't go. See, one of the things that turned Washington upside down with Trump is he was the first president in a long time, 
maybe ever, to actually work and do the job of president. Most of them, they're like Obama. They're spokespeople. They get briefed all day about everything, but they don't do anything. It's run by, the country is run by the bureaucracy, the cabinet, and when, uh, you know, and the Congress. And when, you, and when you actually get involved, that's when they freak out. You're not supposed to get involved when you're president. And they keep you from being involved because they've groomed you and bought and paid or blackmailed you your entire time that you were... Why do you think such a sleaze bucket like Bill Clinton became president? They had more material on that guy to get him to do whatever it is they wanted him to do. And he did it. But Donald Trump, they got nothing. No blackmail. They can't bribe him. And he actually was in, interested in working instead of just being briefed all day and having a desk that had no papers on it. I remember when President Trump was doing interviews, there were papers everywhere because he was actually working. And it was amazing, you, you know, when in his press conferences in his first term, he knew everything about everything that was going on, you know, unlike this guy and the rest. So, so the American people have a different expectation for not just our presidents, but our elected officials. This is why Mike Johnson's pissing people off like me. You know, they're still talking about impeaching Mayorkas. He should have been impeached. The trial and the Senate should have happened, and Biden should have been impeached half a dozen times already. Mike Johnson's a do-nothing. That's, that's what these guys have always been like. They tell you what you want to hear on television interviews, and then they do nothing. Donald Trump's a doer. People want things done. I think, I think a lot of times, a lot of people in this country that are new to the, the, the MAGA train, the Trump train, would like something done, even if it's something they don't necessarily agree with, as opposed to just talking point rhetorics and do nothings, because that's what you have in government. But a debate, this is a, hey, this is going to be the first presidential election without a debate in any of our lifetimes. And I think that's a good thing. And President Trump knows Biden's not going to debate him. And the Democrats, like Trump has been doing in the primary season, are going to establish no debates. And they're not going to come back. Republicans have always been, been mistreated in every single debate. They've all been biased against whoever the Republican is, not just Donald Trump. It's been worse for Trump, or at least we found out things we didn't know before. Remember, CNN gave the questions to Hillary Clinton weeks before the debate so she could rehearse the actual questions that were going to be asked. Asked There were other um, debates, that they're, and they're all biased because of the moderators. So establishing no presidential debates, I think that's a good precedent. I don't think we need them, not in this day and age. You know, with all the interviews and everything that everyone does, what do you learn about them in a debate? Right? They just get steamrolled, the Republicans, by the biased liberal commentators. So I, I think it's awesome that we're not going to have debates. And they're not going to come back. Like that White House Correspondents' Dinner, that's never coming back like it used to be. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Montana, Mark. Hey, Mark. I stand with you. You talked about the Democrats that vote for Trump can still think like a Democrat, but if they vote, if they vote for Trump, that's the most important thing. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you're exactly right, because the economy falling apart, prices going up, it affects Republicans and Democrats. So... I see that little by little. You know, like you know, you know, like um, I've run into liberal listeners. I was um, I was over at uh, Wings Plus once, and and I was talking to Brian. He's the owner of Wings Plus, and he was telling me about this liberal jerk that was in there, who was just just going on and on about how terrible the show is, and how I suck, and Steve sucks, and we're this and we're that while his mouth is filled with wings that he's eating, on our recommendation, by the way. I would, I, I, I've told this story before. I, I was over at Friendly Tire, and I, I run into listeners all the time when I'm at Friendly Tire, but I don't go up to people unless they talk to me because I, I don't know them, and maybe they're not a listener. And there was this one guy staring at me, and I figured he was a listener. He kept staring at me, staring at me, staring at me, but I didn't say anything because, you know, I, I don't know. I, maybe he's not. And if I go up and introduce myself and he doesn't know me, I'd look, I'd feel like an idiot. And, and um, 
uh, Mike said that he's, he's a listener, but he hates you. He's a liberal, but he hates you. But he's buying four, I said, but he's buying uh, uh, tires. I said, yeah, he said four tires and they were all new. So, you know, <laughs> lib you know I, don't, I don't want people to listen to this program that are just conservative. I meet liberals all the time that are ex-liberals too. They're now MAGA. You know, my, I met my wife was a listener of me on the radio and she hated me for years on the radio. And then, you know, she woke up one day and then we went out and we got married. She hated me. She really did. She'll tell you, you know, sometimes maybe she still does, but she really did. She hated me. She's like, she didn't think I should be on. She told me she would turn the radio off when I came on before we knew each other and stuff. But she, you know, so when, when people, that's true, people um, can come around and a lot of these new MAGA people in these blue states are still Democrats, but they're going to vote for Trump and vote for MAGA. And you know what? Some of them will become conservative because they're going to, they're going to wake up out of their thing, you know, and they'll be, and they'll become conservative, but whoever, I don't care what their position is on issues. If they vote for Trump, that helps us. And that's good. You know, I'm still praying that Democrats little by little will see what Trump does for the country. So, you know, I'm that's what, praying that. that's what I pray for. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Mark, take, I appreciate the call. Take care. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Mike from Louisiana. Hey, Mike. You know, that, that challenge is a challenge to Biden to do the debate. We know it's not probably not going to happen, but with Biden, you never know. He might step up to a microphone in the next few days and basically say yes to the debate. No way. Be a no way. I'm going to tell you, I... Um, I know he's not, and I'm going to ask you guys to, um, this is not just a shameful plug for my uh, Twitter. You guys should be following me on Twitter anyway, Brian Craig Show on Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, you get all of my show prep, but I retweeted, or X, whatever you want to call it, you know, um, I retweeted a photograph that was taken in the last few days of Joe Biden, and um, I, let me see, make sure I got it up here. I believe, yes. Okay, uh, if you go to my Twitter, Brian Craig Show on Twitter, I retweeted a photograph that I think is the first photograph that has shown Joe Biden's adult diaper. I've got, I got the picture there, and I'm looking at this right now. Go to my Twitter. You'll see this. That is got to be an adult diaper. That it, and you can see it through the top of his pants and his jacket lapel is up, and you can it, it's got to be a diaper, got to be. Wow! Now, and my thing, my thing with Biden though, uh, uh, Brian, is that remember he said he'd like to take Trump uh, back behind the gym and beat him up. Well, no, he said he didn't say beat him up. He wanted to take him behind the gym. I don't know if that what, what if that was for a fighter to. Get it? I don't know what that that was a that was sounded pretty gay. I remember at the time, quite frankly. Sounded pretty gay, but that's the thing. You never know what this guy is gonna do with his with his dementia. He doesn't know what he he doesn't know what he does anyway at, at any given time. So mm -hmm. you don't know if he's you don't really know if he's if he's gonna accept this thing from. Uh, oh, you're thinking he might? He, well, yeah, he responded already, Biden. He said, "Of course, he wants a debate. He's got nothing else to do." Biden said, "What? Yeah, yeah." There you go. There you go. So he's already said no, but he, you know, he may forget it. He said, "Hey, Mike, I'm very late for the break. I got to run. Thanks for the call." So, guys, uh, I'd, I'd really go to my Twitter, Brian Craig Show on Twitter, X, Twitter X. Look at this photograph. Is that Joe Biden's adult depend diapers sticking out of his pants? There, you let me know. We'll be right back. The cold hard. Brian Craig here. I've suffered with massive pain in my knee for years, but not anymore. It's all gone, thanks to Dr. Appleton and his laser away pain system. I'm in studio right now with Dr. Appleton. Dr. Appleton, how'd you do it? By treating the knee pain with laser, treatment is simple and no side effects. I have robotic lasers that have 
a wonderful effect on joint pain. These are all FDA approved. Now, you don't just help with knees. Yeah, go there and look at the picture, guys, and let me know. I think that's his diaper. I don't know how the Depends work or anything. That's that's got to be um, that's got to be a diaper. I, I am very confident that is the first official confirmation that Joe Biden wears diapers. I'm, I'm pretty sure. All right, welcome back. And the free shipping with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. Uh, that special continues site-wide at MyPillow.com. Remember, whatever you get the special plus free shipping with our promo code Kane. You know, the MyPillow mattress topper 2.0, that's a three-inch mattress topper, by the way. People ask me that. I sleep on that every night, and this is so true. My, my wife will tell you, when we go to bed at night, I turn off the news and everything else. We don't watch any news when it's because you got you want to wind down. And we'll we'll put on an old movie, uh, a TV show. I have not seen the end of a movie or a television show since we got the uh, my pillow mattress topper because I it's it's you're on a cloud. You just I just fall asleep. That it's true. Uh, so if you this is just an example because it's free shipping on everything site wide at mypillow.com with our promo code Kane no matter how large or how small the purchase but the uh, the mattress topper 2.0 for example is 40% off with our promo code Kane but you also get free shipping on top of the 40% off all right so go to mypillow.com and load up this is the time you can also order by phone 1-800-716-4879 1-800-716-4879 promo code Kane K A N E and uh, free shipping on everything. All right, so let me go back to this because uh, I'm so happy that President Trump's uh, throwing out this debate challenge. But now I just want to talk about Bongino. Let me play, though, and I, I like Bongino. Do not misunderstand me. I like Bongino. But let me play the exchange again, then we'll talk about Bongino, okay? Do anything. Anything. He's ruining our country. <clears throat> 
And I don't think he's going to run. And I don't know if, it, if it's donors or otherwise. It might be his family. It might be something. I don't think he's yeah. going to run. But I'd like to yeah. call for immediately debates. I'd like to debate him now because we should debate. We should debate for the good of the country. So I will officially on your show call. I will oh, wow. Also, Look at that. Said, We're breaking news, Mr. President. Donald J. Yeah, Trump calls for debates against uh, Joe Biden. Okay. Now, I'm going to just rewind it a little bit. Um, again, I like Dan Bongino, okay? But he's not a professional interviewer or professional broadcaster or anything. Pro he talked over President Trump. President Trump was about to break news, and Bongino didn't let him say it because he talked over You know, when I do interviews... I don't do interviews very often, but when I do, I only do interviews that are really good, that I'm really interested about and, you know, and want to talk to the person and stuff. But when I do interviews, I don't talk that much. You guys hear me every day. So when I'm inter interviewing someone, I'll ask a question and I won't say anything until they're done. And sometimes you can hear at the end, they're like, where's Brian? You, you can tell with some of these interviews. I let them talk until they're done. You know, Bongino, he really blew the news, unfortunately, if he just would have not said anything and waited for President Trump to finish his statements, he would have had this incredible soundbite on his show, but he talked right over it. Good debate for the good of the country, so I will officially on your show call, I will Oh, wow. Also, Look at that. Said, We're breaking news. See, see, President Trump was about to say it, and then he, and Bongino jumped in. You didn't break news. You stepped on the news, Bongino. And I, I like Bongino. He's, I, this is, you know, it's not, you know, I, I like him and everything else. It's not, if I didn't like him, I'd tell you. I got no problems with that. But this is, this is awful. We should debate for the good of the country. So I will officially on your show call. I oh, wow. Also, Look at that. Said, We're breaking news, Mr. President. Donald J. Trump calls for debates against uh, Joe Biden. I mean, that's great. So we can break some news here. Problems, Dan, and get I love it. it change his ways, but I am officially doing that. I also put out, you probably <laughs> noticed, that I'll take his spot at the Super Bowl if they want. We'll get very Yes, I really love it. Mr. President, I gotta go. Okay, that's that. I mean, I, you know, I, it's a great moment. It, the, the, sto the story's out there. President Trump got enough of it out there that we could put it together, but Bongino, calm down, man. I mean, I, I, he just blew it. When you're, when you're t interviewing s somebody like President Trump, you just sit there. You know, I've seen too many of these interviews. Hannity has finally woken up. And maybe he's woken up, Hannity, since he moved to Palm Beach full time. Maybe he's heard me, you know, critique him. Hannity has stopped talking over President Trump during the interviews. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, even Mark Levin has, who was doing the same thing. But Bongino, oh my goodness, what a mess. What a mess that is. And it's really unfortunate. And President Trump was giving Bongino such a gift, right? He was giving him such a gift, the gift of a massive breaking news moment involving the greatest president ever, Donald Trump, on his program, and Bongino said it, not President Trump. Oh, boy. But I, I like Bongino. If I did not like Bongino, you would There's a lot of these guys I don't like, okay? And I... And I not afraid to tell you. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Brian. This is Barbara. How are you? All right, Barbara. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Really enjoying your show. I turned it on, and of course, I heard uh, Dan Bongino. You know, Dan's from New York. I'm from New York. Trump's from New York. We do some things that probably everybody doesn't do sometimes, but I still think it was good. News. It was good what I heard him say because uh, President Trump did come back and finish what he had to say. Everybody does. Just he didn't. No, he didn't finish what he had to say. He said no. He did not. He didn't. The whole thing. Oh, you pulled up the whole thing. On Rumble. The the message the message got out. The me. What did you hear? You said you don't talk over people, so don't. No, no, no. I didn't say I don't talk over people. I said, when I'm doing an interview, I don't talk over the guest. Callers are not, callers are not guests. No, callers, callers are not guests. No, callers are not guests. 
No, there's a difference. The entire thing. I just want you to know. Okay. Before calling you, and he did. Mm -mm. All right. All right. All right, Barbara. The Super Bowl and all that. Okay. Okay. I know he props. That's fine, but he he blew it. By Gino, blew, you know, uh, Barbara in Baltimore. She's real. I like Barbara in Baltimore, but she gets very upset when I criticize certain people, like Vivek. Bongino, she takes it personally. Now, listen, we're going to uh, take our break for the top. And when we get back, I want to jump into some other issues. But uh, you're welcome to call in about anything I brought up so far on the program. But during the break, go to my Twitter, Brian Craig Show on Twitter. Look at this photograph and then call in and let me know, is that a, an adult diaper that you see on Biden sticking out of his pants there? I've never seen an adult diaper. In person, I've seen the boxes for sale, like at the store, but I've never seen them. I don't know. Let me know. One triple eight, go cane one. Is that an adult diaper sticking out of Joe Biden's pants? There, it's the Steve Kane Show. I'm Brian Craig. Back right after this break. WWNN Palm Beach, WIRK HD3 Indian Town. Programming paid for by Vic Canales Media Group. Yeah, let me pull it up. <coughs> I'll pull it up and show you guys, and you can call in and... There he is. See that? Is that a diaper? I think it's the first photograph of uh, Biden's diaper. Man, that's who's running the country right now. Isn't that lovely? No, that's um, that's news. Because um, we have never seen that before. I, I've heard people say they could smell it. But I've never um, I've never seen a photograph of it. A colostomy bag? That's what a colostomy bag looks like? <clears throat> no, that's you, somebody said you're saying that's the guy that's running the country. No, that's not a photograph of Obama. That's a photograph of Biden.
We'll be back shortly, guys. It's the Steve All right, we are back. Hour number two has begun five minutes after the hour. It's Tuesday, February 6, 2024. Our number one triple A go cane one. I believe that I have obtained the first photographic evidence that Joe Biden wears diapers. It's on my Twitter, Brian Craig Show on Twitter. You know, the, the, this thing with the Biden diaper, okay? Someone in the, uh, during the break says, oh, is it a slow news day? No, it's not. This is news. It's important news. You know, one of the biggest questions facing us is the cognitive decline of Joe Biden. Here we are launching more airstrikes in Syria now, right? Been... Biden's checked out. He's not capable of governing. He's not capable of giving orders. If he is not, whoever is giving the orders is killing people. Murder, right? We've been talking about this last few days on the show. And there's been a lot of speculation about Biden wearing adult diapers. And I'm not making fun because I understand there, there I'm sure there are people in this audience who do. I'm not making fun of people who wear adult diapers. You know, I mean, there comes a time in some people's life when that, that happens. But you're not walking around with a nuclear football and you're not president of the United States. And, you know, we're, with the passing of Toby Keith and the passing of the firefighter from that moment with George Bush with the bullhorn at Ground Zero, as we think about 9-11, this country is under attack now at the southern border. And while we're under attack, more Americans being killed than on September 11th were being governed by, I mean, think about it, you know, um, that moment with George Bush with the bullhorn with his arm around the fire, fireman, remember that? I hear you, and soon the people that knock down these buildings will hear you too. Remember that? If, and that mo as, as much of, I got goosebumps on my arm when I, when I uh, said that. It was it was very important moment, even though George Bush is a war criminal and a monster and a never-Trumper. He's a terrible person. He voted for Biden. George Bush, he voted for Hillary. But when we were attacked on 9-11, he was there for us. And that moment with the firefighter was, was, was a moment of strength. He went back to the White House on 9-11. He went to ground zero right after the event with the firefighter. You know, remember the firefighter was going to get down? He says, no, stay up here. If when, he, if when George W. Bush had his arm around the firefighter and his depends, his adult diaper was sticking out of the side of his pants like it is, in this photograph of Biden, which, by the way, was a press conference he was doing outside of the White House, what kind of message would that have sent to bin Laden and the Taliban and America's enemies? Would it have sent a message that soon the people that knock down these buildings are going to hear from you too? Or, look, America's president blinks in his pants and he wears a diaper and they wouldn't be afraid of us. You know... This country is in a war state with this senile old coot that's running us right now. And, and that the diaper, that and I, I am not making fun of anyone who wears adult diapers. Do not misunderstand what I am saying. I, nobody has accused me of that, but I'm, I'm doing a preemptive, I guess, because I'm not doing that. I don't make fun of people that suffer from cognitive decline. I didn't know that guy had cerebral palsy that I said sounded drunk. You know, you guys thought he was drunk too. You got to admit, didn't you? 
But the interview with Putin that Tucker did happen yesterday. Tucker Carlson went to the Kremlin and interviewed Putin yesterday. And I'm on, I'm on Tucker Putin watch. I'm waiting for that interview to drop. If it drops during the show, I will pot it up and play it. But Joe Biden's adult diaper showing, all right? Joe Biden's adult diaper showing is a symptom of his cognitive decline. Because you know what? A lot of people wear those things and you would never know it. But when you're president of the United States, you have to show a certain presence. And Tucker Carlson, who sat down and interviewed Vladimir Putin yesterday in the Kremlin, what do you think goes through Putin, Putin's mind when he sees that photograph, which I'm sure he's seen, of Biden in the diaper? He laughs, and he knows he can do whatever he wants because Biden, is his cognitive decline is so severe, he's not even aware that his diaper's showing, okay? And, and I imagine there's a lot of people, probably some in this audience, I don't expect you to call in and discuss it, but if you'd like to, I'd, I'd certainly like to talk to you. Because my guess would be that people that are dealing with incontinence, which I'm dealing with in my family because of my 17-year-old dog, we're borderline there, borderline, because she's got cognitive decline. It's not that she doesn't know to go outside. She just forgets to tell us or forgets where the door is sometimes. But when, when your cognitive decline, and, and, and by the way, when you look at this photograph of Biden's diaper, it's not just a little bit showing, okay? You know, it's not just a little bit showing. There's a, a part of it that's got to be, I don't know, maybe four to six inches, it's hard to tell in the photo, that's fully exposed over his pants, over his belt, and the lapel of his jacket is lifted up above it. Okay? If someone had their wits, they'd cover that up. Oh my goodness, it's showing. I mean, how many of you have had something showing? Yeah, you've had something showing, and you, you, you'd cover it up. You hide it. But not Biden. Biden didn't even know. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, in Florida. Wait. Are you kidding me, man? Are you kidding me? Uh, about what? Um, uh, about Putin. What about him? When, when, if, if Trump get in office, he gonna pull our military men out of Ukraine and leave them stranded, and then they gonna be destroyed by Putin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I obviously. You are more informed than I am, okay? Because you, you just said something that I was, this is interesting. You said when Trump is back in office, he's going to pull U.S. forces out of Ukraine? You said you, I, well, okay, now slow down, slow down. This is, now, unlike Dan Bongino, I don't want to talk over the, the, the story. Are you telling me that the United States has, has uh, soldiers on the ground in Ukraine Fighting against Russia, soldiers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He pulled. Those that's that's news. That's news to me. Yeah. Oh, trust me. You know they're, they're they're you know we we are fighting against Russia. Please. Why? Why are we fighting? Right? Why are we fighting Russia? Because you Ukraine can't defeat Russia by itself. Wait. Wait a minute. So, okay, let me be a little more specific. Are we fighting Russia because... Oh, oh, slow down, slow down. Let me, let me ask the question and then answer it, okay? Are we fighting Russia in Ukraine because Russia invaded Ukraine? Yes or no? Russia invaded Ukraine. Well, Mexico's invading America every day. Why, why, is, the, why is the border sovereignty of Ukraine worthy of us going to war in Europe again but the sovereignty of our southern border is we're, we allow it. Mm. 
Hello? Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, the mysterious phone problems. I say, I say, why is the why is the uh, why is the border sovereignty of Ukraine worthy of America going to war for, but Mexico invading and crossing our so- our sovereign southern border is is not worthy of stopping. But Putin would take over Ukraine. So what? Yes. So what? The whole ground. If if Ukraine if if Ukraine all of a sudden became Russia today, what difference would it make in my life or your life? But we support Ukraine, okay? I didn't ask you that. What difference would it make in our life? What is our interest in that? We support Ukraine. Why? Why? Because we are, you know, Ukraine is uh, uh, the United States friend. Okay. Can you can you tell me? Can you tell me? Can you can you tell me two? Can other than Russia? Can you tell me another country that borders Ukraine? All I'm telling you. See, I mean, no, no. Think about that. Think about that. You don't, you don't you don't even you you don't even know where Ukraine is. People out and they stop the support. What? You don't even know where Ukraine is, which is okay. Where Ukraine is, but listen. What, then tell me, what other than Russia, what country borders Ukraine? Hey, Trump is going to call Ukraine because, you know, Putin is his best buddy. He's a dictator, just like Trump want to be a di- dictator, okay? Mm. Excuse me? No, I'm, I'm no nothing to be excused for other than your warmongery. I, I'm trying to understand. This is this is what I'm trying to understand. Why is this? Uh, Ukraine's been invaded. We should defend them. We're being invaded right now at our southern border. Right, thousands a day are pouring into our country. Taking care of no, yeah, by making their uh, Biden is trying to legalize the invasion. He wants to let eight thousand in a day before they'll move in and do anything to stop it. Why is our border sovereignty not important, not worthy, and racist to oppose, to, to support the U.S. southern border is to be racist, Democrats say, but we should go to war with a nuclear power, Russia, over the, over the uh, western border of Ukraine being violated by Russia? I don't understand. Would, would Trump try to, or eastern border, I should say. Trump trying to get rid Trump trying to run KKK rallies so he can... No, 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 we're not talking about that. Why is the border sovereignty of Ukraine worthy of going to war with Russia for, but our border sovereignty is racist to oppose it being violated? Explain this to me. KKK. I mean, do you have an answer? Repeat that, please. Why is the sovereignty of Ukrainians' border worthy of going to war with a nuclear power, Russia, for, but the sovereignty of our... That's part one. No, no, excuse me. But the sovereignty of our southern border is not to be stopped. They're trying to stop it now, okay? They're- no, they're no, they're not. They're trying to legalize illegal immigration, is what Biden's trying to do. Doesn't make you know the the, the problem you're running into is you've got some Rachel Maddow, Joy Reid talking points, and they don't make sense. The minority, y'all want to be the majority, and you got all these. Pe- White, white white people are the majority, and you got all these Spanish people coming over here, you know, and and y'all get in trouble, y'all getting worried now, y'all like, oh God, they gonna take over the United States, <laughs> you know. But my my point is is that okay, Biden is dealing with that right now, okay, he's dealing with that right now. That did you did you did you go to school in Broward or Palm Beach County? It doesn't matter where I went to school. Well, I think people. I think I think people should know. Be, I, I think people should know because y- y- if you went to school in Palm Beach or Broward County, because there's some serious deficits in in social studies education in whatever school you graduated from. Irrelevant. Okay, my point is. my point is, it's time for a break. We'll be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in on the. Mexican restaurant for 33 years. Come on in for a delicious taco salad, steak quesadilla, or a cold margarita. La Bamba is located at 730 U.S. Highway 1 in North Palm Beach. 
check out LaBamba123.com. This is John from Lighthouse Medical Center, CFO and Director of Neuropathy. We want to welcome you to Lighthouse Medical Center this year. It's our 75th anniversary. And we've been able to help a lot of patients. We want to be able to help you with your neuropathy issues as well. If you have numbness, burning, pain, tingling, lack of sleep, or balance issues, please come see us and let us help you with that problem. There's hope out there for you. We've had thousands of patients come through Lighthouse Medical Center. Being able to see the quality improved in their life and being able to help them and their family has been a blessing to us and a blessing to them, and we look forward to doing that uh, for the next 75 years. We don't just treat neuropathy at Lighthouse Medical Center. We have a specialized knee pain program with non-surgical solutions for bone-on-bone and knee pain issues. We also treat chronic back pain, ankle, knee, hip and shoulder pain call for a free consultation with us today 754-222-6642 754-222-6642 that's 754-222-6642 you can make 2024 the year of more Uh, no call screen is absolutely. That's why I do it that way. I don't have to. <clears throat> Mike could answer the phones. I, I like going screenless. I have no idea who's on hold. All right, callers on hold, stand by. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. You know, in the last hour uh, during the break, we were uh, someone had said that they they want to they're going to take their social security at 62. You know, some people take their social security uh, early as soon as they can get it, and and I I don't know. I don't have any recommendations on that. I mean, my my rule of thumb is don't take it till you have to. Some people need to take it at 62 because they need the money. I've known uh, people both ways. I've known people who have gotten their Social Security at 62, and, they've, and they're, they've got other sources of income, and they're like, this is great. I'm getting the money earlier. Look at, look at Toby Keith. He died at 62. I might not be here at 67. Then I, I've known other people who got their Social Security at 62, and all they do is regret it because that couple hundred dollars a month they're not get, that they would have been getting – uh, you know, by the time they're 65 or whatever, they, they need it. So I, I don't know. But I do know this. When it comes to uh, retirement, don't don't go to me and ask for advice. I, I'm not an expert. Don't talk to your friends. They don't know what they're talking about. Talk to Joe Thomas. He's the retirement expert here at True Oldies. And he can help you with all these questions. And talk to him about annuities. You know, I was talking actually to Joe Thomas about this uh, on one of his visits on the program that uh, uh, sometimes people take Social Security early and an annuity for people to do that is great because they got that extra revenue stream coming in from the annuity, you know, and it helps 
make up that difference on what they're not getting on the full Social Security benefit. But one thing I learned from Joe Thomas last week that I did not know is there's different types of annuities that do different things for people that have different ones, needs, and goals. I, I did not know this. So again, don't ask me about retirement questions. I don't know anything. I talk to experts, and the expert here is, of course, Jupiter Joe Thomas. You know, he's offering free consultations with listeners of this program. No matter where you are located in the country, you can call Joe Thomas and take advantage of his no-charge phone consultation. That's right. He's a retirement expert, and he can help you. Uh, he's also offering free copies of his book, The Retirement Know-It-All. I'm going to give you his number. It's 561 5610999 If you miss the number just go to his website jupiterjoe.com jupiterjoe.com you can get the number there you can uh, request the free book or set up that free phone consultation or ask him any questions about retirement because Joe Thomas is a retirement expert and he is the official retirement expert of our radio station You're on the air what's your name where are you calling from Good morning Yes you're on the air Oh, hi. This is Joan from Tampa. How you doing? All right, Joan. Um, what takes um, Ukraine? Well, I know for one, Poland, because a lot of people went over to Poland when this all started, uh, and they have a border with uh, Ukraine. I think Slovakia? Mm-hmm. Well, well no, the, the, point, the point I was making with the caller, okay, he thinks war with Russia, who, by the way, Russia has always been a great friend of America. We defeated the Nazis together. You know, if it wasn't for Russia, World War II may not have turned out the way it did. You know, I mean, Russians, it was, it was the Russians who got to the bunker and got to Berlin first, not us. But, um, you know, the, the point I was making is that um, the caller doesn't know where Ukraine is on a map but he wants us to go to war with Russia over a place that he can't find on a map. If he can't find it on a map, I just can't imagine that there's many U.S. interests there. Well, he probably doesn't even know where the southern border is in the United States. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But, you know, the, 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 one of the problems they're having is it's very difficult to advocate for the sovereignty of the Ukrainian border when we're being invaded. And this border bill... What, what uh, the Republicans, the Republican traders have finally given up on it, even Mitch McConnell. But what they were doing was trying to legalize illegal immigration, it, you know, like they've done with drugs. You know, if you legalize the crimes, all of a sudden there's no crime, right? So Biden is trying to legalize illegal immigration at the southern border. It's the same. That is the same. And as far as the picture? Yes. On, on X? Darwin, I don't know what that is, but what, what, where are his handlers uh, to tuck whatever he's got in hanging out? It, it, to me, it looks because it looks like uh, an adult diaper. I've never seen a Depend, but I've changed a lot of diapers. Boy, oh boy, and it it looks like a diaper. Why did they even let him go out like that? I don't know. Joe's going to do what Joe's going to do. I, I don't know. Maybe they were pissed and wanting to go out there and make a fool of himself. You know, the Democrats have really been undermining Biden a lot lately. So maybe they let him go out there and look like that, you know? Do you see the girl, uh, the girl on the ground with the microphone? She's kind of like turning away. <laughs> well, this, this tells you about the press. What, there's only one question. What is that hanging out of your pants? Is that a depend diaper, Mr. President? And that question is appropriate. The fact that it's, it, that, listen, listen, wearing an adult diaper, wearing an adult diaper is, is not necessarily a sign of cognitive decline, but wearing it on the outside of your pants is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't believe that they, that his handlers let him even go out like that. Uh, maybe they wanted him to. They're slipping or something. Yeah. All right. Appreciate the call. Take care. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. Um, this is Denise. I want to just say about that person that called in, that man. It's unfortunate that that is a good majority of people who are so brainwashed. Don't, I don't know what's really going on and just comes out and starts voicing all of these things. And I guess he's also a mind reader that not only does he know that Trump is going to win, which I agree with, yes. he's going to do all of these things. 
this is the ignorance, and it's unfortunate, Brian, but I listen to your show every morning, and I think for the majority of us, we're pro-Trump and we're Trumpers, that the people that we're not reaching, because we're not listening to your show, are people like that man. No, that, he, that guy's a loyal listener. Well, that guy's a loyal listener. You know, listen, this is one thing you got to understand. Hold on. When, you know, liberalism is an addiction, like drugs, alcohol, and things. And when people are in, you know, when people are suffering with addiction, they, oftentimes they want help. They don't go out and get it, but they, they, they make the motions and eventually build up. You know, there's a lot of liberals in this audience that they listen to the show, and, and I think they, they want help in their recovery from the mental disorder that is liberalism. I'm not because that's not I tell, I tell you guys all the time. I'm anytime we do an appearance, I meet at least one listener who says, I used to hate Trump or I used to be a liberal and I listened to you for five years, 15 years, 20 years. And now I'm, I'm a Republican all the time. I run into people like that all the time. Oh, I hope so. I wish I would run into some of them, but thank you. Well, it depends. Well, you're in a different, thank you very much. You've got good taste in radio shows. If you're on hold, hang in there. We'll break and be right back. Making morning radio great again. It's the Steve King Show with Brian Craig. Yes, yes, okay. Okay. Tomorrow and then. I'll check again, but I think Thursday next week. That's exactly right, Blue Crow. Kuroi says, so we have to be abused verbally by him. I mean, if you notice with all these liberal jerks that call, if, if I make my points by talking to these jerk-offs, if you notice. You understand what I mean? And mo mostly through questions, right? What did I say to the guy? What did I say to the guy? He tells me how important Ukraine is. I say, name me a country other than Russia that borders Ukraine. And then, um, I, then I asked him uh, some questions about, uh, I said, so war with Russia over Ukraine is valid because Ukraine's, they invaded Ukraine? He said, yes. And I said, why is their border sovereignty worthy of war, but our border being invaded is not, you know? I make all of our points through him. And did you hear the fake phone problems? And then he starts saying KKK, Trump KKK. That's like his SOS. Oh, age does not matter at all. George Washington was never 81. He died in his 60s. I, if I remember correctly, George Washington was 66 or 67 when he died. He did not live to be 81. 
unfortunately. A lot of people think that the doctors killed George Washington. They were doing bloodletting. Mount Vernon, see I was close. Mount Vernon, if you've never been, you should go. They, they have, first off, it's just cool to stand in General Washington's living room and you get to walk through his house and everything, but they have the best museum you've ever seen. See, see. see, that history degree comes in handy every once in a while. I don't think he was 68. 66, 67 popped in my head. 67, yep. Yeah. In the pictures, you got photographs of George Washington? <laughs> There's no photographs of George Washington. He did look old in those wigs. Sixty-seven. See, I was right. Yeah, the first time I went to Mount Vernon was many, many years ago. They didn't have that museum, and then the last time I went was in two thousand nine, and they had that museum. It just blew me away. Seven years. All right, we are back. Call us on hold. Stand by our number one triple eight go cane one. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Brian. It's Sherry from Texas. Hey, Sherry. Hey, he's that's in his pocket. So he is wearing them. That is definitely an adult diaper, and he's got it in his left front pocket, and his coat jacket just happened to get caught up in it. See, now this is what I was talking about for people that are just tuning in. I found a photograph that was taken in the last day or two. It might have been yesterday, but in the last day or two at the White House, it's, it's Biden with a press conference outside the White House, and you can see the adult diaper way outside of his pants, and his lapel of his jacket is up. And I want to be very clear about this again. I, I don't usually do disclaimers, okay? I, I you know, but it... Wearing an adult diaper is not necessarily a sign of cognitive decline, okay? A lot of people, some some women wear them in menopause because they're leaking all day, right? I mean, that's true. But, okay, but wearing the adult diaper outside of your pants during a televised press conference is a sign of co major cognitive decline. You watch him walk, you watch him talk, you watch him fall, you watch him stumble, and this just puts the whole puzzle together. It's evidence. It's evidence. And it, what's really sad is every ruler around the world is witnessing this. Yeah. With, I mean, this is why our country is in the mess that it's in right now. So, I mean, I'm here, I mean, we're here in Texas. I mean, we're in the, we're in the heat, we're in the boiling pot here, right? Well, you're under attack. Yeah, I mean, you know, I point this out. Every day, more Mexicans invade Texas than attack the Alamo every single day. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And then you've got Biden going, going to the Supreme Court saying, oh, no, 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 no. No, no. You leave that border open. And the Supreme Court rules on his behalf. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell has happened? Yeah, but you know what, Governor? Gov I know a lot of people don't like Greg Abbott, and I understand the Bushes run Texas. I get it, but, he, but what Greg Abbott has done is amazing. Greg Abbott has defied the Supreme Court, and I want to throw I, w I threw this challenge out on my podcast last night. I'm going to throw it out to you on the air now. Um, that um, 
That particular spot where he put up the razor wire, Governor Abbott, used to have thousands cross a day. Now it's like four, right? In that area. Okay. Um, the Supreme Court said, no, he can't do that. Abbott has defied the Supreme Court. What can be done to, to, to get Abbott to take it down, right? Now, I, the Supreme Court does not have police power. They do not have enforcement power. They just make rulings. Now, in the past, Democrats, disob in the days of segregation, when the Supreme Court ruled that um, uh, Democrats cannot uh, separate blacks from whites, they, that segregation is, is unconstitutional, Democrats continued it, but President Eisenhower sent federal troops to escort the black students into those Democrat racist Southern schools. The Supreme Court has no enforcement power, nothing. So the only thing that could happen is Biden could send the army down and take on Governor Abbott in his wheelchair, but I don't think that's going to happen. Gover uh, G Governor Abbott, if President Trump picked him to be his vice president, I'd be very excited. And I know a lot of people don't like Greg Abbott, but look what he's doing. He's turned... Uh, Al, Al, one last thing, caller. Al Sharpton was on TV yesterday. I'm going to play this in a, in a little bit. Al Sharpton was on TV describing the southern border as an invasion this week. Governor Abbott did that. It's amazing. Wow. You know, the thing is, is, if this keeps up, and I don't like using this, this term, and I've, I've sat with my husband many times and had this discussion, but it's Biden that's going to push it into a civil war. No, there's not going to be that. We're going to we're going to have Trump back, and it's all going to be you know. You shouldn't even talk that way. All right, you should not even talk that way. You, it's just not right. Let me pull this up. If you're on hold, hang in there. Um, let me see. I wasn't going to. Let me play this clip first because I forgot to play this earlier. Um, there was a video circulating. There was a guy at the southern border recording, and he said. Um, he was talking to this illegal that had just crossed and this, and, and you may have seen the video and the illegal said, you'll know who I am soon. You know what? You remember this? Well, the guy's been identified. Listen to this. Crazy. I found this on, uh, uh, on Twitter a couple days ago. Hey, y'all remember this guy? But you are really not smart enough to know who I am. But soon you're going to know who I am. Yeah, it turns out he's known terrorist. Head of the Islamic Party for Azerbaijan. Crossing the border illegally in broad daylight on camera, talking on the way in. Yeah, I added the bleep. So the guy's an Islamic terrorist and he's down there bragging. You'll know who I am. So what? That's what's going on at the southern border, people. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Once, twice. All right. Appreciate the call. But, uh, you know, th what's, what, what Greg Abbott has done is turn public opinion in, uh, in, in Trump's favor from people that you would not expect it to be. Let me, I think this is the clip. This is Al Sharpton, who's as liberal as liberal gets. Well, what is being done to uh, get the public uh, to really uh, rise up in various states to say to their senators that they want to see the borders, uh, the border issue resolved. I mean, you're getting migrants beating up policemen in the streets of New York. You're seeing an influx of migrants all over the country that frankly have people outraged. And couldn't there be some kind of public pressure put in the next couple of days in some of these senator states saying, why are you allowing this to continue? Because at the end of the day, senators have to deal with their voters. And at the same time, it, uh, in the bill, you give uh, uh, money to Gaza, to, to, to civilians in Gaza and Israel. But the border, I mean, we're looking every day at the invasion of migrants. Wow. Al Sharpton is spouting Trump policy at the southern border, and he referred to it as an invasion. Now, a lot of you may not remember the old days of, you know, of Al Sharpton when he used to walk around New York dressed like a pimp and he weighed about 500 pounds, and he wasn't so cleaned up as he is now. He's a racist. He's a monster. He got Jews killed in New York. He caused riots that resulted in the death of Jews and Greg Abbott did this. 
Greg Abbott has turned the most radical leftist like Al Sharpton into finish the wall, secure the border, remain in Mexico, and called it an invasion. That's a big deal. And that was on MSNBC on Al Sharpton's show. Our number is toll free, 1-888-465-2631. 465 2631 My name is Brian Craig. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. We'll be back right after this. The cold, hard truth. Delivered morning 6 to 9 right here on The Steve Kane Show. All right, we are back. I'm Brian. This is the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. I want to talk about my chiropractor, Dr. Appleton, who has just changed my life. You know, the five times he's rid me of pain, sometimes just from growing older, sometimes from injuries, the pain has never returned. The most I've ever needed is two treatments. That's it. Even with my arthritis, two treatments. It's amazing. You know, I, I really thought that pain was just part of getting older. Well, I'm getting, I'm getting up there. Because I, I can remember when my grandparents were my age. It's crazy. You know, Toby Keith passed away 62 years old. 62 ain't what he used to be. Although I got many years for that. But for 62. But I just thought that aches and pains were part of growing older, that you just had to learn to live with it. And then I met Dr. Appleton, and uh, he told me about his laser away pain treatment, and he rid me of pain that I'd been suffering from for years in my right knee. 
It, it's, it's amazing. Pain is not something you need to live with. Stop suffering. Go see Dr. Appleton. Appointments are not necessary. Walk-ins are welcome, even on Saturdays. I'm going to give you his number. It's 954-973-0710. 954-973-0710. And online, appletoncairo.com. Give him a call and say bye-bye to your pain. All right, now, diversity. What does diversity mean? Oh, my goodness. You know, when when I was in middle school, the um, the mayor of Fort Lauderdale, uh, Mayor Cox, C O X. Got to make sure of that. He was the mayor of Fort Lauderdale. Does anybody remember Mayor Mayor Cox with an X of Fort Lauderdale? Oh, this was beautiful. This was beautiful. I saw this live on television. I was like in eighth grade. This was on the local news in Fort Lauderdale, in Broward County. He was visiting a local elementary school, and he was taking questions from little kids in the classroom. And it was an elementary school, I don't know, third graders, fifth graders. A little boy raises his hand. He's black. Mayor Cox, with an X, calls on him. Yes, young man, what's your question? And the, this is uh, this was, so I was in eighth grade, so this was like 1985, 1984, 1985, somewhere around there. Little boy, he's black, Mayor Cox, with an X, spelled with an X, calls on him, and the little, little black boy, and it's relevant to the story, says to the mayor of Fort Lauderdale, how can I be the mayor when I grow up? And the mayors, and this was on television, it was, it was insane, Democrat, no doubt. He said to this black boy, he said, anyone can be mayor. You just have to be free, white, and 21. <laughs> Remember that? Free, white, and 21. That's an old time saying, isn't it? Free, white, and 21. Oh, my goodness. Well, that little boy, I don't know where he is now. I don't know, maybe he's on the city council or Broward County Commission. I don't know who that little boy was. Free, white, and 21. That's an oldie but a goodie, isn't it? I mean, yeah, that's an old thing. Democrats used to say that all the time here in the South. Free, white, and 21. Wow, you know, okay. But now we have diversity. No, that's a true story. I wish I, I had that. I don't know if it was ch Channel 10. It might have been Channel 7 back in those days before they went like they are. Now. I don't remember, but it was... It was Mayor Cox, COI. I'm sure you guys can find this if you search it. It had to be written about in the newspaper. I wasn't really following news too much then. I was in eighth grade. It just, we had the, we had the news on at home, the local news, and I saw it. Oh my God, free, white, and 21. But here in 2024, we have diversity now, right? So it's not that way anymore. Diversity. You don't have to be a certain color, right? Hmm. Well, Mayor Cox with an X, I'm sure, is long gone and dead. But Mayor Adams in New York, oh, uh, yeah. New York City is kind of like Fort Lauderdale back in the days of Mayor Cox with an X. Listen, this is, this is Mayor Adams of New York City bragging about the diversity in New York City's government and he's doing this. He's talking to a large group of people in a, in a gym of a school. There's citizens there, city workers, and television cameras as he celebrates diversity. And I'm deadly to see you. Deputy Mayor Williams Ison, Deputy Mayor Mira Josie, Deputy Mayor Amazon, Deputy Mayor Maria Torres Springer. Have you ever seen this much chocolate leading the city of New York? Mmm. Really? Wow. Didn't Bill O'Reilly get fired from Fox for talking about hot chocolate when he was talking about a good-looking black woman? So goes the allegation. Now, Mayor Cox of Fort Lauderdale and um, Mayor Adams in New York, okay, they have one thing in common, both Democrats. So let's let's hear uh, yeah 
Look at how diverse we are. We have all black people. And you've never seen so much chocolate. All right, let's go. Dyson, Deputy Mayor Mira Josie, Deputy Mayor Amazon, Deputy Mayor Maria Torres Springer. Have you ever seen this much chocolate leading the city of New York? Oh my gosh. And then go down the line. Look, look who's here. This is representative of the city. That's why people are hating on me. You trying to? Well, it, it, it sounds like he it, is. Is Mayor Adams a segregationist? There's not one white person up there, and he's bragging like that's a good that. That's the opposite of diversity, Mayor Adams. Let's go back. Oh my goodness. Springer. Have you ever seen this much chocolate leading the city of New York? Oh my gosh. And then go down the line. Look, look who's here. This is representative of the city. That's why people are hating on me. You trying to figure out? Why they hating on me? They hating on me because those who, how many of you go to church? Man, this is a Matthew 21 and 12 moment. Jesus walked in the temple. He saw them doing wrong in the temple. He did what? He turned the table over. I went to City Hall and turned the table over. Oh, he's Jesus now. Mayor Adams is Jesus. Interesting. Eat this much chocolate leading the city of New York? And then go down the line. Look, look who's here. This is representative of the city. That's why people are hating on me. You trying to figure out why they hating on me? They hating on me because those who, how many of you go to church? Man, this is a Matthew 21 and 12 moment. Jesus walked in the temple. He saw them doing wrong in the temple. He did what? He turned the table. Over. I went to City Hall and turned the table over. First woman police commissioner of color, first Spanish speaking police commissioner, first Spanish speaking uh, uh, correction com com commissioner. Go through the line of what we're doing. Yeah, bringing back segregation. If you, if, I mean, my goodness. Mayor Cox with an X. He's probably rolling over in his grave thinking about such a thing. And you know what's crazy about this is now, because uh, th in this video, then all of the people got up that he called out and they're being celebrated for divert. It's If you have all black people and no white people, that's not diversity. That is the opposite of diversity. Now, I got a question about Mayor Adams. He, he uh, had a press conference about the illegals the other day. Did you see this over the weekend? He was wearing a scarf, and I'm, I'm not into men's fashion, you know. But uh, I did buy a new suit yesterday for the cruise from the men's warehouse, you know. But um, I'm not into men's fashion, but I read some articles, people that are into fashion pointed this out. Mayor Adams... Uh, gave a press conference over the weekend. He was talking about the illegals, and it's chilly in New York. It was in the 50s this morning here in South Florida. And he was wearing a scarf, just a little scarf, that cost $700. Well, okay. Um, yeah, $700 scarf. Here, here's my question about Mayor Adams. When did he start wearing $700 scarfs? Was it before or after he made his agreements with the Bidens on keeping the sanctuary uh, city status of New York in place, paying the illegals, putting them on a retirement plan? I'm wondering. You know, it kind of reminds me of Bernie Sanders. Maybe he's always wore $700 scarves. I don't know, but this is the first time I saw the media pointed out. Remember Bernie Sanders? Bernie Sanders was running against uh, Hillary Clinton for that nomination. Obama summoned him to the White House, took him into the Oval Office. Next thing I know, Bernie Sanders comes out, endorses Hillary Clinton, drops out of the race, and now he owns five houses. And a lot of people think that there's some connection between that meeting with Obama, his endorsement of Hillary, dropping out of the race, and then all of a sudden being a wealthy man. 
and they're probably right. Five houses, one of them's a summer camp. All the socialists own five houses. Yeah, it's crazy. And I'm just wondering when Mayor Adams started buying $700 scarves. I don't know. I don't know, but I've never seen, yeah, never seen, you ever see this much, John? Oh my goodness. Isn't that racist, by the way? Isn't that a racial slur? <laughs> All right, we're going to take our break for the top of the hour. Oh my goodness. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977, celebrating 47 years on the radio. My name is Brian Craig. Our number is toll free, one 888 go Kane one 888-465-2631. 888-465-2631. You're welcome to call in about anything we've brought up so far in the last two hours. I will do some recapping. And uh, there are some stories we haven't gotten to yet. And Steve Kane, of course, will be joining us as well. Don't go anywhere. We'll take our break for the top of the hour and be right back. WWNN Pompano Beach. WIRK HD3 Indian Town. Programming paid for by Vic Canales Media Group. Broadcast. Can you hear me? It's because I played it a few times. No, no, no. I played it a few times. But you can hear me. I can hear you. Seems fine. I played the same clip a few times. I kept stopping it, talking, and replaying it. Okay. All right, we're coming back. On the air 
since 1977. It's the Steve <clears throat> King Show. All right. Callers on hold, stand by. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. Steve Kane joining us. Hey, Steve. Oh, boy. Do, well, do, shoo. Just, uh, just to do a, all right, uh, just to do a recap. Um, well, there's all kinds of craziness happening. Um, yes, um, but I, I just, I, um, if you're on hold, stand by. I just want to recap a couple things. Of course, uh, I talked at the top of the show at 6. Uh, Toby Keith died yesterday. Of course, uh, the, the great song after 9-11, Toby Keith passed away. Um, and we are on Tucker Carlson watch. Uh, Tucker Carlson did go to the Kremlin and interview Putin yesterday. And um, there's, there's uh, the CNN and others are having a, a meltdown over this. Um, I want to play uh, a little bit here from CNN. Well, it won't let me queue it up. Might have to wait a minute. Might take a call or two first. But um, Tucker Carlson has taken a risk that no other journalist has taken with this Putin interview. Um, there are there are liberals out there who want Tucker Carlson arrested upon re-entering the United States over interviewing Putin. Now, my whole life, I've seen journalists interview you know terrorists and dictators like Osama bin Laden and such. I've never heard of people wanting journalists in, uh, arrested for interviewing dictators and such. But now there's a we're in a whole new world. All right, do you want to take some calls, Steve? What do you what do you want to do? We haven't gotten any leaks out of the interview yet. The interview has not dropped yet. All we know is is that Tucker went to the Kremlin yesterday and interviewed uh, Vladimir Putin. All right. I think I I there I think the content the the complaints are that he's making the media in this country look bad probably, but if the interview, uh, we are definitely on Tucker Carlson watch. If it drops while we're on the air, I'll I'll cut to it, guys. Okay, so don't worry. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, gentlemen. I'm Chris from Fort Lauderdale. Oh, hey, Chris. Uh, great show, great show, and uh, uh, Mr. Steve, good to hear you. Good to see you. Not as usual. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> hey, great radio voice, by the way, but um. Yeah, no, I mean, I guess get into um, all of this diversity in New York City first. It, it just goes to show you the same rules that they don't apply to them, you know, the same rules. It's just jealousy. As soon as they get in the seat, they do what they say they're against, and they're intolerant. They're, um, they do the same things that they despise, so to speak. And... Um, and well, here's here's my here's my que- I got a lot of questions here about this. But Mayor Adams, have you ever seen so much chocolate in your life? Now, my recollection is <laughs> um, Bill O'Reilly was uh, fired from Fox News because there was an attractive black woman that he was uh, interested in, and he referred to her as hot chocolate. And referring to an African American as in, in chocolate in the same sentence got him fired. <laughs> um, why is it okay to call black people chocolate now? Exactly. I mean, they get there, their kids in the candy store for the very same thing that they are supposedly against. As soon as they get the opportunity, they're haywire. I mean, Obama was, was in particular the same way. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's what the justice they're, Having a 100% black uh, city government, that is not diversity. It is the opposite of it. It's not. They'd be screaming, <laughs> well, heck, we, we, we see it before, but they only want their turn to do the same thing. They were just jealous. Now, this thing about the, the $700 scarf that he was wearing, uh, that Mayor Adams was wearing at the press conference about it, did, did he always wear such expensive clothing, or is this since he, he started paying off the illegals at the Biden request? Did they Has he made some money in the last couple weeks, or has he always had such expensive fashion taste? I don't know. Uh, you know, they get they get uh, wealthy once they get in office. It, it's interesting. Spenders of other people's money. I don't. Letitia James is worth fifteen million dollars. Uh, she's done nothing but work for the government the whole her whole life in New York. So, I, what do they pay municipal workers in New York? Hey, wheeling and dealing, baby. Pay for access, like the Clintons. Maybe the Clintons discovered that. I'm, yeah. I'm that's why, that's where, but, why we're ready for dust. Yeah. No, no wonder Richie's so happy. But he, he was a bus driver. They paying a lot of money. All right, t- good to hear from you. Thanks for the call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 
Hi, my name is Jill. I'm calling from Clearwater. All right, Jill in Clearwater. What's up? Hey, um, there's a couple of things. First of all, Toby Keith, I love him. And that song, I, I mean, I still listen to it today. And one of my favorite things to do is listen to reactions on the radio with people from other countries, right in Australia, Scotland. And one of the things that these younger kids are most taken by is the patriotism of America. And, and I cry listening to these reactions because it's like if they only knew that that's not going on anymore. And it brought the country together and the pride that it instilled in all of us and the support for our troops was truly... Well, the Democrat, that there's a little revisionism there. After 9-11... The liberals weren't so patriotic at first. Bill Clinton and 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 uh, uh, Governor Cuomo, the father, Mario at the time, they they went on national television and said, "We must ask this question: What did we do in the Middle East to cause these people to knock these buildings down?" They now they stopped, and then remember the Black Firefighters Union? Oh, this was great. They they uh, they put up a statue. They put up a statue. Uh, at Ground Zero that reenacted the flag raising over Ground Zero and, you know, like the Iwo Jima statue. And it depicted a real event and it was three white firefighters. The Black Firefighters Union marched down on Ground Zero protesting because there wasn't a black firefighter there, even though there wasn't really. And they, and they ran them off, remember? They ran the Black Firefighters Union off of Ground Zero. They said, get the hell, the, the, the cleanup crews did. They said, get the hell out of here. And they ran away. It was, you know, so the Democrats were not united as much as the rest of us. But Toby Keith's song was definitely a uniting song. The Angry American, courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue. That was a great, it's a great song. Me too. And, you know, as far as Biden's the diaper, I was yep. a senior citizen. And if you're out and about and walking and talking, there's no reason to wear a diaper. You can wear a pair of and if they do have a diaper on them, uh, to me, that's mental abuse. Are you dropping kids off at school? No. I heard somebody say, I love you in the background. Yes, that was my daughter. That was your... Oh, okay. Very nice daughter. Very nice daughter you have. Well, you make some good points. Welcome welcome to the show, and thanks for your call. Thank you. Have a great day, Brian. All right, take care. We've got nice people out there. Not everybody's Renee from Harlem. Yeah. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Frankie D from the Bronx and Allen Stewart. Hey, Frankie, what's up? What's up? Here's a big one for you. Here's a big one. Just hang on to this remark. Tucker Carlson is over in Russia to broker a peace, a world peace yep. from Putin. Yes. That is the ultimate goal of these two men. These two men are looked on at the, by the world, and it will be a great feather in their cap and also uh, some great move to quiet the world now right now. That's why I believe Tucker Carlson is over there. If Trump likes Putin. Putin has respect for Trump. And also, I think, I, I believe Carlson has Trump's ear. So this is going to be fantastic. I'd love to see it happen. Well, you know, the thing about, you know, uh, Tucker, I don't think Trump's involved in this because that would be a violation of the Logan Act and things are going too well for Trump to do that. However, when uh, uh, Trump uh, set up the summit meeting with Kim Jong Un in North Korea, he had Dennis Rodman set that up, and uh, and which was amazing. What's now this interview that Tucker did with Putin yesterday? Now one thing has leaked out about it, other than it happened. This uh, will be the beginning of a chain of events that will bring an end to this god awful war in Europe that Biden has caused. Good to hear from you, Frankie. Thanks, thanks for the call. All right, take care. I, I, I think I know him. I don't know why that name is so familiar. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Joellen from Port Lauderdale. Hey, Joellen. Hey, Joe. Hey, I, hi there. I hadn't heard from um, Mayor. I hadn't. Yeah, you know, I, I don't watch TV, but I hadn't heard him. But the last time I, I was listening to him. You know, he was railing against Biden and the administration. And then I heard him, the other, I think it was yesterday, and, you know, all the things he's given these illegals. And I was like, oh, my God, what happened? You know, where, where to um, hear that, uh, I guess. You, 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 you cut out. Your cell, your cell phone cut out. I, I missed your point. You're talking about Adams and the illegals? Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah. So I said, where have I been? I said, you know, um, before he was railing against um, Biden and the administration, you know, but now he's 
seems to be all on board with. And and he's and he's and he's wearing a seven hundred dollars scarf. These people suck. D and D is always tough. He's always said what an idiot that guy was. He knew it wasn't. Well, you know, you know what I knew. He, this is listen. I never heard of Mayor Adams before he was running for mayor. I'm not a New Yorker. I've been there as a tourist a few times. Okay, although I would, yeah. you know. Yeah, but I, you know, when I knew this guy was trouble, when he was running for mayor, he had his whole posse with him, right? And uh, they were looking out of this window from like the fifth, fifth, sixth, tenth floor or something, and it was in the middle of the day, and he saw uh, some uh, a street fight break out on the street below him, and he was there with his posse, and they were filming this. Now, Mayor Adams is a former police officer. He had his whole crew with him. What do you think he did? Yeah, I think I remember you talking about it. I don't think he did anything. He, he called 911. And, you know, there was, there's, you know, it, Donald Trump stopped a fight once on the streets of New York. You know, Ronald Reagan, uh, before he was in politics, uh, was, was in his apartment. And, and uh, this was in New York. It, it might have been Chicago. It was New York or Chicago. And he saw um, uh, a street fight. He went, uh, and a woman was involved. He went down there, intervened, and stopped it. You've heard that. You ever heard that famous story? Howard Cosell had them pull over his limo and stop the street fight in New York City. Mayor Adams. What kind of cop is Mayor Adams that he called nine one one when he had his whole posse with him and didn't stop the person from being victimized? A wimp. He's a wimp. He wasn't a real cop. He was. He was a guy that got by uh, doing something. I get you know, but not not police work. Yeah. All right, Joellen. All right. Appreciate the, the last couple calls you've made. We've had a bad cell phone connection, so I don't know if you need a new phone or stand somewhere else. Yeah, all, right. all right. Take care. All right. We'll take our break and be back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in on the action. Call the Steve King Show live on air now. 888-GO-KANE-1. This is King. All right, and it's time to check in with Attorney Barry Siegel from the Siegel Law Group. Attorney Barry Siegel, good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you today, Brian? All right. What do you have for us today? Well, I want to talk about long-term care and planning for long-term care and how important that is. And really, it's part of an overall estate plan because if you run out of money during your lifetime, then there's really nothing or minimal amount to leave to your loved ones anyway. So uh, we had a gentleman come to our office yesterday, uh, a gentleman in his 80s, uh, has a, a wife who's ill. Uh, the thing is, this gentleman, uh, you know, this family, they're very wealthy, and uh, you know, that didn't automatically eliminate them from qualifying. In fact, if, if it hadn't been for the fact that they had been doing gifting to various people and charities over the last number of years, they actually would have been able to qualify. Uh, but in this case, he wasn't able to. So he came in for the free consultation. We reviewed everything. And then we let him know that, unfortunately, it's not going to work. And in, in most cases, we are able to help people qualify. But we do give that free consultation where we are going to review everything. And then we will be able to tell uh, the client or the potential client that either, yes, we can help you with this, uh, helping this person, this loved one, uh, qualify or no, we can't. And if we can't, uh, we'll let them know and there's no out-of-pocket, no cost for the consultation or anything owed. And uh, so when we are able to help people, we are able to set things up in a way that so they're Medicaid compliant and they can qualify. Mm. And then they don't have to spend down their assets so they can get care at home in an assisted living facility and a nursing home and not be forced to spend down their assets and potentially go broke. And it also it also can cover at home care, correct? Yeah, home care home care up to forty hours of care a week mm -hmm. at home that Medicaid can cover. Yeah, that's a that's a that's amazing. And you know, guys, don't assume that you have too much and you don't qualify. Let the, it's a free consultation with the Siegel Law Group. Let them tell you whether or not you qualify. All right. Let the, the you know Attorney Barry Siegel, that Siegel Law Group has an entire team that are experts and specialists in this very area. Uh, now, no matter where you are in the state of Florida, the Siegel Law Group can help. Take advantage of the no charge consultation with the Siegel Law Group. Just mention you heard Attorney Barry Siegel on the radio. Okay. Here's the number: eight five five. FLA 3782. 
855-FLA-3782. And online, SiegelLawGroup.com. All right, Attorney Barry Siegel, we'll talk later in the week. Mm -hmm. Back after this. Now, back to the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. Listen in the Palm Beaches on 95.9 FM, the Treasure Coast on 106.9 FM, Harrison Boca on 95.3 FM, Fort Lauderdale on 96.9 FM, and anywhere in the world at True Old... All right, we're back. I'm Brian. Steve Kane is here. I bought a new suit yesterday for the cruise, Steve. So, yeah, yeah, I bought a new suit. You know, the, the, my other... I... I uh, before our first cruise, the only I have blazers and jackets, but the only suit suit I had before our first cruise was the one I got married in, and that's kind of looking very '90s zoot suity. Looks like something Arsenio Hall wore on the Arsenio Hall show. But I, <laughs> I went out and bought a new. It does, but I, I keep it. But I went out and bought a new suit last night, and uh, I just want to make an announcement: the cruise is full. You can't book on it. If you've already. Um, booked on the cruise, call in and book on the excursions. I found out, I did not know this, you cannot book on our shore excursions once you're on the ship. You have to book before we're on the ship. I did not know this, okay? And I've got some, uh, I've got family going and, I had, and I'm glad I asked about it. So call in at Cruise and Travel Depot, he'll get you booked. Okay, so let me, let me get back to this Tucker Carlson Putin interview, Steve, because uh, we're on, I'm, I'm so excited. I hope it drops today. I wanted to play this clip of CNN, um, and CNN found out that um, <laughs> they found out that the interview was happening, and they had a meltdown. All right, oh, listen, this is CNN yesterday. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Listen, they, and, they, and they have a new term for MAGA people too. A massive shakeup in Kiev coming as Putin is trying to court the MAGA GOP in the. You hear that? The MAGA GOP, you know, that this is a new thing. This is the first time I've heard this. So, yeah, so there, this, is, this is the uniparty, right? There's, there's good Republicans, they're just Republicans. And then there's the MAGA GOP, right? A massive shakeup in Kyiv coming as Putin is trying to court the MAGA GOP in the United States. In fact, one of the leaders of the MAGA GOP is in Moscow tonight. It's the man you see here. With the MAGA leader Donald Trump. <laughs> this this new thing, the MAGA leader, the MAGA journalist, MAGA Republicans. What do they think that that's that's an insult? I mean, I'm a MAGA radio personality. You can, uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Tucker Carlson, possibly there in Moscow to interview Putin. Definitely there as a Putin supporting celebrity. Just listen to how Russian state media. You know, Brad- I mean, Steve, how many times? Remember uh, Sean Penn. How many, how many dictators did Sean Penn and Oliver Stone go and buddy up with? I re- remember Sean Penn with, uh, with uh, uh, El Chapo? Remember that? He's hanging out with El Chapo, uh, Chavez. They, uh, remember when Sean Penn went and did that tour before the war in Iraq with Saddam? The WMD. Yeah, I mean, you know, now all of a sudden, you know. A massive shakeup in Kyiv coming as Putin is trying to court the MAGA GOP in the United States. In fact, one of the leaders of the MAGA GOP is in Moscow tonight. It's the man you see here with the MAGA leader, Donald Trump, Tucker Carlson. Our great MAGA leader, Donald Trump, with the MAGA celebrity, Tucker Carlson. Possibly there in Moscow to interview Putin. Definitely there as a Putin supporting celebrity. Just listen to how Russian state media is breathlessly celebrating his visit. Okay, now I, let me explain this next part. And I'm, I'm glad CNN did this because I saw some of this online yesterday and they have the translations. Tucker Carlson's famous in Moscow. And uh, peop, uh, they were talking, about, so the local media went out on the streets and asked people about Tucker. And also, Tucker was being stopped in the streets by Russians and had conversations. Lee celebrating his visit. Independent journalist Tucker Carlson has flown to Russia from the U.S. 
the Turkey to Vanukova Airport. He saw Spartacus Ballet at the Bolshoi Theater, had lunch in a nice restaurant, went for a ride around town, rode the subway. He charged his smartphone via a USB port and connected to a fast and free Wi-Fi internet. Okay, I, okay now that... that, that that's safely. But yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You know, but I, so, so Tucker Carlson, I cannot wait for this interview to drop. He took, he just went on a whole tour of Moscow. I, I would like to see that Spartacus ballet, by the way. If, I wonder if it's like based off like the, the gladiator Spartacus. And to do a fast and free Wi-Fi internet. He charged his phone. <laughs> Although they're knowing the details about the fact that it was during USB port may give him reason to think twice about all of this. But look at them talking about him like a celebrity. Everything he does on camera, breathlessly repeated. Now, it is unclear if an interview between Putin and Carlson will take place. But if it does, it gives Putin a chance to sit down with a big supporter. Now, when I, I remember CNN, remember during the Gulf War in 1991, CNN had Peter Arnett, CNN reporter, behind enemy lines in Baghdad with Saddam Hussein and his handlers during the entire war. Remember that? You know, and, and we, were at, we were physically at war against Saddam Hussein, and CNN had a reporter hanging out with Saddam during the whole war. It might be worth asking yourself, since it is getting pretty serious, what is this really about? Why do I hate Putin so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? Does he eat dogs? These are fair questions, and the answer to all of them is no. Vladimir Putin didn't do any of that. I'll actually always remember watching that clip. I was standing in Ukraine 48 hours before the war began there. You know, I remember, you know, we're talking about 9-11 a lot because of the passing of Toby Keith and also the firefighter from Ground Zero with President Bush passed away this week. Right. Remember, he was going to get off the rubble and President Bush said, no, stay up here, you know, stay up here, get up here. Um, both of them passed away this week. So you think a lot about 9-11. You know, um, I remember not only did CNN have Peter Arnett embedded with Saddam Hussein while we were at war in the Gulf War in 1991. Um, after 9-11, CNN sent out an order to their uh, reporters to not wear American flags on their clothing reporting from Ground Zero and not to give pro-American bias in the reporting from Ground Zero. We're talking about September 12th, 2001, okay? Now all of a sudden they're the, they're the great patriots over there at CNN. I'll actually always remember watching that clip. I was standing in Ukraine 48 hours before the war began there. Wow, why was she in Ukraine? She's one of the main anchors. Why was she in Ukraine 48 hours before the invasion? It's, it's like CNN knew, right? Mm. Well, Carlson then stood by Putin consistently all the way through. And that is why he can go to Moscow now without any fear of being summarily imprisoned. He's a hero. This was Putin's mouthpiece in the United States. Somebody who had turned a blind eye to the atrocities committed by Putin because they were happening far away. Once vibrant towns turned to ruins, mass graves with dozens of bodies in the Kiev suburbs, a theater full of innocent women and children sheltering, bombed despite the giant world's children, written on the roof, more than 200,000 Ukrainian soldiers killed or injured. And tonight, Putin is trying to seize on the fact that Zelensky's military appears to be in turmoil, capitalizing on a moment of intense American political dysfunction and intensifying. Okay. Now, this report obviously was before the interview happened. Uh, Tucker Carlson did interview Putin yesterday in the Kremlin, and nothing has leaked out from it yet. So, um, but you could hear the panic. You know, it, it, back to Saddam, Steve, I remember CNN, they had a press conference with Saddam Hussein and he had European children on his lap that were being held hostage with his parents as human shields before the combat operation began in the Gulf War in 1991, while CNN's reporter Peter Arnett was embedded there, okay? And, and, and if you also remember, they had... Um, uh, Prior to the war, as, as tensions were heating up, they had uh, Bernard Shaw, Peter Arnett, and who was the third? Was it Blitzer? I can't remember who the third one was. But they had, they had um, 
Bernard Shaw, who's since passed away, Peter Arnett, and another one of their reporters in Iraq and Baghdad during the during the shock and all in 1991, and they covered it live. Remember that it was so. CNN has a history of interviewing terrorists and dictators. Okay, their entire history is that. Tucker interviewing Putin now is is is, is a treasonous act, according to CNN and the liberal media. And I'm not kidding. Tucker Carlson, when he returns to the United States, could very well find himself uh, charged uh, with the the Logan Act that he's involved in uh, foreign policy. Steve, the, the 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 liberals. This hasn't made TV yet. Fox News. They created this Tucker Carlson by firing him. They gave us this great gift. So Fox News isn't even going to carry a story about this. And the mainstream media are going to downplay it and, and have a blackout on it. But uh, even with criticisms. But the liberals online are talking about arresting Tucker Carlson when he sets foot back in the United States. And yeah, they're, and they're not joking. I'm not saying they wouldn't want to. I'm just saying I think the uh, Steve that 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 that, 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 tr that Trump derangement syndrome is in their bones. They're not thinking clearly. It, they arre Steve, they arrested the President Trump multiple times and they got a mugshot of President Trump. If they can arrest and get a mugshot of President Trump, who's Tucker, right? I mean, I would have thought that was crazy. Hey, if you're on, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm, I've been, I first heard about this on Sunday morning when I woke up and I've been like, the suspense has been killing me for this interview. If you're on hold, stand by. We're going to take our bottom of the hour break and be right back. Making morning radio great again. It's the Steve. It seems like that problem we were having with Steve's completely gone. It's been two days, so that was the issue. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I hate for them to start fixing it because oh, yeah, then they could get, we'll have another screw up that'll take <laughs> us two weeks to figure out. You know what I mean? We just figured this one out. I thought he was going to be back yesterday. yesterday, but he hasn't gotten back yet. So okay, I'll call, again. call him earlier and let him know maybe. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he won't be there if he doesn't answer. <laughs> I just got a DM from somebody. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> A trust fund never worked in his life. What do you, what do you mean? Like uh, Hunter Biden, Nancy Pelosi, the Kennedys, John Kerry. I wish I had one of those trust funds. Michelle Obama, she's never worked. Do you, do you know Obama only taught like one class a year when he was teaching at the law school? I mean, give me a break.
to get one free, and they're our first My Pillows, and we love them. We absolutely love them. They're just absolutely marvelous. Yeah, I'm so glad. I got slippers on the way, too. Go to MyPillow.com and use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, and buy your MyPillow 2.0. <coughs> right now, buy one, get one free. I, I think his interview could get a billion views with Putin. <coughs> On all the different platforms and everybody retweeting it and people playing it on the air like I'm going to do. <clears throat> Sal can call. I think so. I don't think that's unrealistic. Do you guys think a billion? Now, again, I don't mean just on Tucker's Twitter. I mean all the retweets, people playing it on programs like this. I'm talking about overall worldwide a billion views. I think it's possible. Who doesn't like Elvis? How many? Well, who watches all of anything, right? Who watches all of anything? <clears throat> From beginning to end, give me a break. That's not how you count. All right, we're coming back. Now, back to the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig, celebrating 47 years on the air. All right, we're back. I'm Brian. Steve Kane is here. Let's go back to the phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? <clears throat> Good morning. Once. Yes, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, hey, it's me, Ivy. Good morning, Ivy and Broward. It's hey, nice to see you back, buddy. Nice to hear your voice, Steve. Um, hey, hey, Brian, um, who was it that, who was it that went to, to uh, interview with, uh, Osama bin Laden in the cave? Who was that person? It was uh, uh, my, uh, I don't remember the name, but I think it was the BBC did it. Okay, well... BBC, well, not even better. You cannot, you cannot mess with uh, the war mongers' money, okay? If they don't have, if they don't have uh, a problem to take advantage of, they're going to create a problem. So he, he is too close to um, messing with their war money, so to speak. Well, can you, can you imagine? Can you imagine what Putin knows about Zelensky? And, you know, in this interview, it, it, you know, listen, Putin is a dictator. I'm not, a, I'm not a, uh, uh, a supporter of Putin, but he's not our enemy. He's not our dictator. Who cares, right? You know, and, and Pu Putin, with his KGB training, he's been running Russia since Yeltsin died, you know, so he's very smart. And it depends on how he wants to go with the interview. Does he want to, does he want to be humanized? Does he want to expose Zelensky? What, you know, we'll find out. I really, I really think uh, Putin was becoming more moderate, and I think personally that I think uh, they pushed him into this position and pushed the war. I believe this goes back to the Bushes getting their, getting one of their last hurrah because because Trump is going to put an end to all of this war money uh, uh, putting, and in, and I, I dare them, I dare them to arrest because uh, what's going to happen is I believe the fact. Ramaswamy is going to make more more clear of why it's happening and what and what what Russia. Uh, well, you know, here's 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 a uh, uh, here's a question. This is ser a serious question. I'm not saying they're going to arrest Tucker, okay? I mean that, but they arrested President Trump, so you know. Um, but do you think at the White House they've had discussions about arresting him over this? I wouldn't, I wouldn't put in fact, not the people in the White House, I think it's the people out. I mean, before they arrested Trump, Fanny sent her, her, her gigolo to meet with Biden's lawyer at the White House. 
So, you know, that, I mean, if, they're, if they've, they had White House meetings and made a decision to arrest President Trump, Tucker, that's easy to do after you've arrested President Trump. I, I still say it's double dare them to do it because see, they're going to make him our martyr and, and it's going to put hope. Yeah. I, I agree. That, that Arrest him. Yeah. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Daniel. Mississippi. No. Oh. Yes, Daniel. Thank you, Chuck, for bringing I, I can't understand anything you're, you're mumbling. I don't know. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yo, it's Sean calling from West Lake Worth again. How you doing, bro? All right. Otherwise known as Wellington. That's right. Hey, it was Peter Arnett who actually went into the cave and interviewed Bin Laden. Was it really? Not, wow. So CNN's all, So CNN thinks it's okay to interview Bin Laden and Saddam. But Putin, so why is it okay to interview Bin Laden, according to CNN? I think Peter Arnett might have been with the BBC then, but he worked for CNN. At one, so why is it okay to interview Osama Bin Laden, but not Putin? Yeah, no, I, I, the logic doesn't track, but it, but it was Peter Arnett, and I do, I do recall that. Hey, I'll call you back Friday. Right. Oh, he must have a good one if he's waiting till Friday. Oh my! God. I almost asked him to tell us now because I this is I don't like suspense. Okay, now Fox News is obsessed with this suburban mom, and you know I don't think such a thing exists. Uh, the, I I understand that there are women who are mothers who live in the suburbs, but when they always talk about oh I'm taking a hit with the suburban, I think that's just some crap they make up. But Mac Kaylee McEnany made a very good point yesterday about single moms. Let me play this. This is McEnany on Fox yesterday, and I think she made a great, great point. Imagine you're a single mom in this country. You're working two jobs. You barely have time to see your children. You are desperately trying to afford diapers, to afford formula. As Harvard Public Health Magazine says, one in two families have trouble affording diapers. It now, I remember when my daughter was in the diaper age, diapers are not cheap. And they are not, they are very expensive and they're extra expensive for parents of young children because those are families that are just starting out, you know, and the best gift you can give at a baby shower is the gift of diapers. I'm not kidding. They're, they're that expensive. But anyway, McEnany. One in two families have trouble affording diapers. And many of these women, single mothers, fall into this category where they do not qualify for federal benefits, but yet they're struggling to achieve the American dream, to buy a house, to afford for their family. And you look over, oh, wait, if I cross the border illegally, Mayor Eric Adams is going to give me a credit card? Give me a break. What an insult to every single hardworking mother in this country, especially those who can't afford to buy diapers for their child. Yeah, if you come here illegally, you get free diapers. I mean, that I, I don't know if McEnany is auditioning to get back in, in the president's good graces and get her old job back or something, but she made a very good point, and that was yesterday on Fox. So, you know, Fox is mostly bad, but every once in a while, something good comes out of it, you know? And, and what, what McEnany is talking about there is one of the things that has the Democrats in so much trouble. You know, public opinion is just furious about the... It's, it's one thing to support an open border. It's another thing to set them up on a retirement plan where everything they have is taken care of. And that's, that's ticking people off. I, I was watching uh, a woman interviewed in front of a community center over the weekend. They closed down the community center, where her, a black woman, where her kids used to go and, and play you know, basketball and stuff. They closed so that they could house illegals in there. And they, and they put newspapers up in front of all the windows and everything so nobody could see what was going on in there. And they brought them in in the middle of the night. They're, they're, you know. did, you see the, did you see the new uh, uh, thing that they're uh, trying to pass? Yeah. Yeah, you, they want to... They're trying to legalize... They're trying to legalize illegal immigration. Right? They want to... Le <laughs> right. I mean, my God, everybody will be an immigrant in the country. Yeah. Except us. We'll be up. All right, now, we'll uh, take our break and be right back. The 
All right, we're going to get a big sigh of relief from the audience because today you are not going to get the amateur gold report. You're going to get the professional gold report from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated in Boca. William Youngerman, good morning. Good morning, Brian. How you doing? Oh, I can tell by your tone that the metals are doing great. So, yeah, I... They're, they're hanging in there in our trading ranges that we've seen for several weeks now, but the nice thing is they're down at the bottom of the trading ranges, giving us all a great buying opportunity uh, yesterday and today so far. I'll look back up a little bit today. Still right down at the lower end of the trading range, which we, we like to see when we can take advantage of it, just like the traders do when it gets down to this area and buy it. Uh, yesterday we saw gold drop $13.70, closing out today at $2,026 after trading in a range of 2015 up to 2032. Silver lost $0.38 cents at $22.27. $22 is the, the strong bottom for uh, silver and uh, bounces off this 22 area quite often, giving us, again, buying opportunity. Uh, platinum was up eight, uh, $7 yesterday, closing at $898.00. And palladium was up six dollars at nine hundred and thirty-six dollars. The dollar, U.S. dollar, still remains uh, surprisingly uh, strong in, in this economy, and that's uh, holding the uh, metals from breaking out of this trading range at this particular time. But once the dollar starts to give way again, we should see metals going back up towards that twenty-one hundred dollar number. Silver so gold this morning up two dollars and ten cents at two thousand twenty-seven dollars. Trading overnight, two thousand twenty-two to two thousand thirty-two dollar range. Silver uh, down four cents right now at two dollars or twenty two dollars and twenty five cents. Platinum up eight dollars at nine hundred and five dollars, and palladium down two dollars at nine thirty four. So any buying in uh, this range, I think, is a great buying opportunity. Absolutely. You know, I was talking. We well, remember to a friend of mine yesterday. He's a silver stacker guy. Okay, and he he loves his silver eagles. And he was telling me that like, and and, and I'm gonna ask you because you 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 know better than my friend, but. Um, He's, th he said there's no better time to buy Silver Eagles than right now. Like this, is a time, he, this is a time to really load up if you're a Silver Eagle guy. Absolutely. Uh, Silver Eagles are back down to the uh, low end of the trade, which is uh, basically the, the, uh, uh, the area where we, we are selling them. Just a little bit over the U.S. Mint uh, production cost, and that gives us a great buying opportunity on the Silver Eagles. Uh, trading at you know, a, a, a under $5 premium, which we have as high as $20 Get out of town. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What, what, what did you say the premium is on the on the Silver Eagles? Uh, under five dollars now. Get out of town. They were. They, I remember they were like twelve dollars. Twenty. It was. It was almost like twice the coin. Uh, at what? So, oh my goodness. Now you know. Of course, um, it's it's a good buy for everything right now, including gold. But I, the reason I, I asked William Youngman very specifically about the Silver Eagles because they were they were crazy prices not that long ago, and under five dollars. Uh, over the over that that melt price, that's I I never thought I would see that with with uh, those great silver eagles. All right, listen, give William Youngerman a call. He opens up at 10 a.m. and take advantage of this. Uh, by the way, everything's available for immediate delivery at William Youngerman's, which means you take possession of your medals on the spot. One 327 5010. One 327 5010. Online, WilliamYoungerman.com. Now, remember, you can do all your transactions over the phone and through the mail, no matter where you are in America or the world. But if you can stop in, you should. Uh, and you can do just that in Boca at 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca on the first floor of the Bank of America building. All right, William Youngerman, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay, have a great day. All right, back after this. Social Justice Warriors for Breakfast. Now the... All right, welcome back. I'm Brian Stevens here. Our number one triple eight go cane one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. Steve, I I want to go over this incredible offer from from Slomans. You know, I've got that doorbell camera, and uh, I love it. I mean, you know, you know, you know, the thing about the doorbell camera, you know, it's great security and all that. That's wonderful, and everything else. But lately, I've been getting hit by these door to door salesmen like no one's business. And apparently, door to door salesmen don't know what the what no soliciting means or no solicitation. I got a sign at my front door. It says no solicitation, and they're very clever, Steve. I don't know if they do this at your house, but they do this knock like it's a friend of mine. They'll do like this, so you know, like it's like somebody's. So you think it's your kid coming home. 
and I got that doorbell camera, and my wife or I, whichever one have our our, our iPhone, I'll say, hey, you got, we'll, we'll look it up and say, oh, it's a it's a it's a salesman. But listen to this. There's a great offer from Slomans right now, and this is this is what it is. Slomans is giving you a free, which is valued at fifteen hundred dollars, home security system, mm-hmm, with professional installation when you use their low cost central station monitoring okay this is a limited time total home security package you get an led touch screen keypad a motion detector 10 entry points i don't even know if i have that many in my house that's amazing lifetime service plan professional installation and backup battery and you also get a free doorbell camera with the installation of your slowman's shield okay now here's the number give them a call 1-833-283-5050. 1-833-283-5050. 1-833-283-5050. All right. So lots of lots of good things are happening, and it's all good news. Um, you know, uh, N- Nikki Haley, though, I, w- I was reading yesterday, she has um, – well, it depends on what you measure – when you ask how she's doing, um, if you mean in the polls, she's trashed. I mean, she's off. The, I mean, I, I got one new one. Let me pull this one up. Hold on, because I wasn't going to bring up the polls. But because, I mean, they're, I, I'll just bring up. No, no, no. Just give me a minute because this, one, this one's a good one. I just don't have it pulled up. I'll pull it up in a minute. And um, this one just, just says, says it all when it comes to polls. But I'll, as I... Damage, well, it depends on what that means, um, you know, uh, by damage. Um, you know, let me let me pull up this poll because. Uh, okay, here's here's the latest poll in the Republican primary: Trump versus Nikki Haley, and this is according to the the Trump hating NBC News. Um, President Trump at seventy nine, Nikki Haley at nineteen. President Trump holding a sixty. 60 point lead over Nikki Haley. 60 point lead over Nikki Haley. Holy, God, that's nationally? Yeah, and that's the Republican primary nationally. Yeah. So, uh, and it's no better in South Carolina. She's getting creamed in South Carolina. But when I, when I say it, how is she doing? It depends on what you're measuring. Uh, last month, she had record fundraising. Um, she, she raised millions and millions of dollars after she. Stuff them away. Well, well, she she had this record fundraising after she lost in New Hampshire. After she lost, she had she raised millions upon millions of dollars, and she still and she still raised now a lot of mostly Democrats are donating to her. And when when I when you say how she's doing, it depends on what happens to that money. Does she is she filling is she able to fill up her bank accounts? Is she and her family set up financially for the rest of their lives off of this? I I don't know. Shots. If it was, if she wasn't, if she was, I, I don't, Steve. I, I mean, when when she's sixty points behind in the polls, she lost every race so far. She's projected to lose South Carolina. What <clears throat> what value does she have? I mean, in, in her present situation, the, this is the value. Okay, when when you're a presidential candidate, you're on TV a lot. Right, like Vivek Ramaswamy. When's the last time you saw him interviewed? Right, he's out. DeSantis, the same thing. She she was on Saturday Night Live this weekend. She's doing a lot of interviews, and every interview Nikki Haley does, she talks about carpet bombing Iran. So she's she's a, a spokesperson for the military and yeah, for the military industrial complex. So while she's a presidential campaign person she has is an ignominious traitor but it, maybe she sold when you cross trump it, it pretty well spells your long-term defeat well she's she's either severely mentally challenged or or um she's loading up her bank accounts right you know it's like i give you an example okay this and i, I don't know what happens to this money when ron DeSantis ended his campaign he didn't say I'm dropping out. He said I'm suspending my campaign. And what I've heard people say is the suspending allows them to keep the money somehow, in some form, somewhere. They don't know the laws and take full advantage of them, I'm sure. Yeah. The 
quick, it's a quick hit. When it's over, it's over. But if, but if, but if it's fifty million dollars, if she made a decision that it's worth one rodeo here and be forever humiliated and have uh, unlimited, I don't think so. I don't think she's smart enough to even think about that things like that. I think she's delusional. I mean, that's how I view her. She seems delusional to me. I, 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 campaign manager, I, I, I sure handle things differently, that's for sure. I saw her on Saturday Night Live, and it was weak. I, I did watch that. It was very, very weak. And it's sad. It's horrible. It's like passing an accident on the road. Now, I cannot play this audio. So I'm going to have to describe this. And the reason I can't play this audio is because the NFL won't let us play this audio. Did you, um, I don't know anything. I, I make it a rule only to talk about things I know about. Okay. Uh, well, this is an interest. I, I mean, I only talk about things I am knowledgeable on. So I don't talk about sports. Okay. But um, Peyton, Peyton Manning's son got caught on a hot mic. Okay, and I'm, let me read this article to you. Okay, um, this is in the Gateway Pundit. In recent years, I'm reading the Gateway Pundit article, and and I tweeted this article. What I'm going to share with you, you can pull the audio up on on uh, Twitter and 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 listen to it, but I cannot play it on the air. In recent years, the NFL's referees' controversial calls, coupled with the surge in online betting have sparked rumors that the NFL is scripted. You know, my brother-in-law is convinced that the NFL is like professional wrestling. It's all fixed. I don't know. I don't know enough about it to have an opinion, but I'm just going to share with you what um, happened. Uh, back to the Gateway Pundit. Now legendary Hall of Fame quarterback Peyton Manning's son, Marshall Manning, is calling the NFL scripted. Following Sunday's Pro Bowl game between the AFC and NFC Pro Bowl teams, Marshall Manning told his uncle Eli Manning, who was coaching the NFC team, the refs won the game. He then goes on to say, the game was scripted. He used the word scripted. So there's this whole thought going on. Th again, I know nothing of football. Or is what, that they know nothing of football? You're calling me a loser? I don't know about football. Oh, nephew, son, nephew. Yes, son, nephew. I don't know if it's his son or his nephew. But he said the refs won the game and it was scripted, which implies that it's they're fixing the game. Is that possible? He's a sore loser. Well, Vivek Ramaswamy said they were going to fix it so that Taylor Swift's uh, boyfriend would win. You know, so she could endorse, but I don't know. But I'm just telling you. I don't believe it. You don't believe what? That it's fixed? I don't believe that it's fixed. Okay. There's money involved. Well, isn't that why they fix things? Because there's so much money involved. I mean, the main money is with um, the betting now, the online betting. No, the main money is in the television rights and then the, the promotional money. I mean, now that they're doing the uh, the sports betting at the casinos here... I mean, the be the betting, I, I don't, Steve, I am so anti-betting. I don't gamble any, you thought I had a gambling problem in my past. You've asked me that before. Did you have a gambling problem I don't know about because I'm so opposed to gambling? I don't bet on, I, I'll put I'll put a quarter in a slot machine, but that's, that's it, you know? But, so, but the, the, the drive, the, the financial forces behind the betting, now that it's been expanded to the online world, it's it's an amount of money that the human mind cannot even grasp. So I, I don't know. But I, this I, I'm what I'm curious about, though, with this story, and a lot of stories like this, I don't care if it's fixed or not. I, I don't I don't I won't even watch the Super Bowl, by the way. Um, we will be here live. Nah, no, I know. No, no, I, 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 I'll probably start watching it and fall asleep. I, I just don't care. And if they had a decent halftime act, Reba McIntyre, I mean, my goodness. You know, that's... Uh, Name going to be at halftime? Reba McIntyre is what I heard. McIntyre? What about the... the Taylor Sw Oh, my goodness, Steve. Swift. Oh, my... Every time that name is said, I just... Ugh. Well, what about it? I mean... The... No, she's not performing. Reba McIntyre. Reba McIntyre. Yeah, that's what I heard. I could be wrong about it. I know nothing of the Super Bowl. 
but what I, but anyway, the reason I bring this story up, it's the end of the show. I'll, I'll take a call or two, but you know, the, the reason I bring this up, one of the things I do when I follow the news is, is watch what, you know, media bias is not necessarily a spin on a story, an angle on a story. Media bias is what stories the media choose not to cover, right? That's a big part. That's, that's probably the, so this story with Eli uh, Manning's family that it was set up, they, this particular game, I don't know if it's true or not. I have no knowledge. I have no opinions. I, I don't have enough information on football to have an opinion. What am I, you know? It's like talking to uh, Liberal Al about politics, me talking about football. But I'm, I'm curious to see if anyone runs with this because the audio and video is crystal clear and everything else. If they choose not to run this story, that'll put me in the position of thinking, well, maybe it is. <laughs> because if it wasn't, they would run the story. Yeah, well, if they bury the story, that's, that's like almost a confirmation of the story, right? If they, if they bury it. All right, our uh, phones are ringing off the hook, and we only have 30 seconds left. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Okay, I'm Joe from Pocono. Yep. Listen, to, I worked in the city of New York for years. I took a civil service test. I passed it. It's very hot. Ten seconds. Uh, okay, I was Hispanic. Okay, you weren't Hispanic enough. Okay, you're on the air. What's your name? Yeah, you're on the air. Five seconds. Hey, how you doing? I just wanted to say hello from Nanaimo. All the best to you, and uh, okay. I'm glad to say hello. Okay. All right, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. All right, guys, I got to run. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if you already are sub, make sure you like the video, guys, all right? Thanks for watching. The whole scripted